Salam alaikum. Um, just bear me a second. Just having to change Facebook uh, times. How you doing, guys? Sorry I'm late. Um, had to deal with a few things. Mashallah, welcome to the new members. Um, alhamdulillah. Yeah, welcome to another, another arena. Um, today's stream may not be as long as the usual ones because uh, the guests can't stay around um, indefinitely. So in the past, we've been four or five hours. Uh, today, we're probably going to go for about two hours, inshallah. Um, so if any of you are not aware of the, the format of, of what the arena is all about, um, it's very similar to other streams that you may have seen on EF Tower and uh, SC Tower, where non-Muslims come on and question panelists. Um, but here we like to, we don't mind if it gets a little bit rough um, and everyone gets a shot. Um, we're not here to deal with egos, we're here to deal with arguments and positions that people may hold. And so, so this is your opportunity as an, a non-Muslim, as a hater of Islam, whomever you are, to come and challenge Islam. Ask questions, raise your misconceptions, try and present something else as the truth. Um, this is the place to do it. And mashallah, we've got some great minds here who can, inshallah, respond to um, what you've got to say. So without further ado, um, we've only got three extra gladiators today. Um, Brother Sadat couldn't make it. So um, mashallah, Brother Zaki Hussain is joining, mashallah. So, salam alaikum, Akhi. You're muted, bro. Wa alaikum aslam, Brother Hamza. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. So Christians should get excited now. They should be rubbing their hands. It's the Zakir Hussain, the one that's in debated James White and that. So, you know, I had Christians yesterday banging on in uh, other other streams. And I told look, come to the arena. There's one guy banging on about the Old Testament, how he's going to prove Judaism is the truth and this and that. Alhamdulillah. Looking forward to it. His name is No Money. So look out for him, inshallah. <laughs> um, so, and I'm going to bring someone now who's going to, we, we always need a nice guy. Yeah, because uh, you got know Zach, you can get a little bit rough, like I can get rough. No, I'm a nice, uh, I'm a nice guy as well. But this guy's the nicest guy. I don't know a nicer guy than this guy. Oh, Allah. Salam alaikum, Ahi. How are you, bro? Wa alaikum assalam, rahmatullahi barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. I feel like I have to be on my best behavior today because usually I'm a little bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with you here, I have to like, uh, alhamdulillah. Dude, that smile is just gonna uh, calm me down. Alhamdulillah. How are you, brother? <laughs> Salam alaikum, Zakir. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. Wa alaikum aslam. Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. It's an honor to finally be on a stream with uh, Brother Hamza. Uh, no, the, it's the other way around, bro. It's an honor to be with you. No, nah, no, nah. the honor's my way to you. <laughs> Allah bless you both. Mashallah, great work that you both do. May Allah bless you both. Brother Shabir Yusuf is going to join us. He's he's running. He finishes work at nine thirty, so he'll be a little bit late. I'm just going to put the link straight out there in shot online in the comment section, so people can can get on. So no no Canadian brother today with us. No, um, I, he's very hard to get hold of. Um, and he he just said that uh, he's um, he couldn't make it today. Subhanallah. So what can we do? Like such is life. Yep. Just chat amongst yourself just while I sort this out if you don't. Where are you based now, Zakir? If you want to say this on the live stream, that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm based in Birmingham. Brilliant. That's the center actually, of the universe. <laughs> I, I spent quite a bit of time in Pakistan. I was with Brother Adnan last week in Islamabad. Oh, really? Yeah? MashaAllah. Yeah. I'm, I met him before he's African. How is it with uh, man? He's okay. Yeah, yeah. He's, in, he's in Tanzania now, I think. Yeah, I think he's uh, heading to Malawi now as he left Malawi already. Um, I'm not sure. I know it's something on his social media, but I know he's in Africa, alhamdulillah. He's the Lion of Africa. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Lion in Africa, yeah. One day I hope to go with him, inshallah, visit the place. Inshallah, definitely, bro. It would be a transformative experience. You should definitely go, inshallah. Inshallah. So I'm just just trying to get this uh, this comment pinned because on Streamyard you can't do nothing with the comment section. You have to go into YouTube to do it. So have you seen the arena before, uh, Hamza? Um, to be honest, bro. I don't really watch many videos on YouTube, <laughs> um, but ah. I have noticed I have noticed some clips. 
Um, I think I was sent something by an atheist actually, when there was a bunch of atheists that were talking about something to do with infinite regress or something like that. Okay, I okay. Think hijab was on there, and you were on there. Um, but to be honest, I've probably seen like a few seconds here and there of many streams, including yours. But I'm not a YouTube fan, if that makes oh, sense. Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, there was only really lockdown like that's caused this. No, I think it's a great idea. I think it's fantastic. I think what you guys are doing is absolutely phenomenal what is needed because a lot of people are online and they want answers to questions and they want to interact with real human beings and people who are yeah. sincere and authentic. And I think that definitely comes across with the Hamza's Den. There's that sense of authenticity because it's all open. <laughs> and, and people like authenticity. They don't like, they don't like fakery, bro. They don't like people trying to play the part and it looks like that what you guys are doing is like come on in and let's have a discussion this that's it let's, that's it let's, we're not we're interested in egos. It out. <laughs> yeah we're not, we're not, we're not, it's like we did um we did a stream last week about the, you know the Quranist, the hadith rejectors and um one brother was saying oh you should you know each you know each person you should see what their personal circumstances are what's led them to this position and all this and i'm like i'm not really bothered yeah i just <laughs> want to deal with the nuts and bolts of it I want to know what they're building this premise on. Let's just take that out. And then they've got that excuse to hold on to. Do you get me? Rather than saying, oh, maybe this guy had the wrong advice or maybe he doesn't understand Hadith properly. I'm like, no. What is the premise? And the premise is very simple. They reject Muhammad as, a, as, a, as a, an his sunnah. Forget the hadith being 200 years Bukhari, this, that, the other. It's the idea that if they were alive in the time of Muhammad, they think they could understand the Quran better. And so that was the that was the nuts and bolts of it, and then it came down to an understanding of the Quran. So, um, so what we do here, I'm not, like we've had, like that, you know, that uh, geezer from Speakers Corner, James Speakers Corner. You may have seen him on some of his videos. He's he's a bit of a tr troll, and yeah. but anyway, we had him on, not because it's James. We want to take James down, but let's hear what his what his point is, and his point was ridiculous, and that's what we like to do here. We like to give everyone a shot. Um, obviously trolls are trolls. We get rid of trolls if we realize they're just trolling for the sake of trolling. Do you get me? There's one guy who seems to take every position. One minute he's a Jew, then he's then then he's an atheist, then he's a Muslim rejecting Quran, and then you know what I mean like, that make. <laughs> uh, anyway, right, we've got a few in the back chat, so let's see what's going on here. Uh Manners Bot, welcome to the arena. You're muted, mate. Hi, how are you? Uh, fantastic. I was going to go make coffee, but thank you for taking me. No problem. Uh, so, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. So, I have uh, one. Uh, I have actually man, man, let's talk. Can I just stop you at this petition? Are you a Muslim? Yes. Okay. So, this stream is for non Muslims? Yes, yes. So, just two minutes. I, I've been trying to post this in chat, but it gets deleted for some reason. Uh, have you guys heard about Wasim Rizvi in India? Okay. I'll say it again to you. I'll say it again to you. This is for non Muslims, not Muslims. Right, I'll get dropped off. Just make a point. If you can please address the Wasim Rizvi. No. Okay, guys. It's non-Muslims this. This is their opportunity. If you're Muslim, what are you going to come and challenge us? Are you going to come and challenge Islam? You're Muslim. It's, it's pointless. There's different streams for different things. Go to Eat If Power. Um, we have uh, The Floor Is Yours. We have Open Forum. We have other things going on. Uh, this is not that place. Yeah, we, we, we want someone to come and challenge Islam or try to tell us Christianity is true or you're all stupid for believing in a sky daddy. This is what we want. Do you get me? Honestly, how many times I tell Muslims, please? Right. Oh, this is going to be Muslim, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hi, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Are you Muslim? Yes. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. um, um, let's say uh, ex-Muslim agnostic here. Ex-Muslim agnostic. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So not the um, fantastic you're an ex-Muslim, but just fantastic you're not a Muslim. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, we can uh, start with uh, maybe uh, some hadith, authentic Bukhari hadith uh, that I think that uh, we're not going to start somehow... with hadith. What, look, make your point, make your question, make your contention, and then you can support it with whatever you like. So what is your point you're making? Yeah, the point I'm making is um, when it comes to faith, I, I've tried so hard. But um, for example, in my case, when I uh, saw uh, many hadiths and I um, uh, make the comparison between them and what's happening in reality, I I, I feel that they refute that Islam is is probably the truth. So, you, so you're next Muslim because mm -hmm. you don't 
the, believe the hadiths are reliable source of information is that right no i found some hadiths that i couldn't accept uh, although um trying to um see the explanation from the scholars but it didn't convince me obviously what was the hadith that's okay okay uh, okay i've got seven here um uh, we can all start seven. with all seven mate just just give me the first one okay give me the, for example, one. Give me the most confusing one the one that bothered you the most the one that you couldn't reconcile no matter how hard you tried no matter which scholar you went to what is it oh best one though then wait a minute just a minute Oh, okay, here. Um, this is uh, Sahih Muslim, uh, book 51, hadith number two, authentic hadith. Jabir, uh, saying that uh, Jabir reported Allah's apostle uh, came to the grave of Abdullah bin Ubay, uh, brought him out of uh, from that, placed him on his knee and put his saliva in his mouth and shrouded him in his own shirt uh, and Allah knows best. So the, the, he, this guy was typically like a, 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 a hypocrite. But uh, um, what do you think about this um, spitting on a face and taking someone out of the grave and spitting on his face? S sorry? Um, th th this guy is treated as an hypocrite, which uh, they um, justify why he, uh, Muhammad did this. But um, do, you, uh, do you find it normal that uh, someone is being taken out of the grave and being spit uh, with saliva in his face? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Did you know yeah. what you're talking about? I can read the hadith in Arabic or English again, if you want. Okay, well, what's your name, brother? Um, French fries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, French fries. So, <clears throat> the, you, your first point was that you felt that these hadith go against reality. So what I'm getting from that is, that you think this hadith is not a representation of the actual state of affairs. Now, what in that hadith goes against reality? That's what's confusing. You're narrating an event that the Prophet ﷺ took mm -hmm. someone out of the grave, and you're talking about saliva, and shrouded him with his shirt. Now, I'm not aware of that hadith the way that you, you've narrated it in the English language. It would be good to get a link to read the Arabic and the English. However, even if what you're saying is right, I just want you to basically stand in the possibility that there's an issue with critical thinking here. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that how is this hadith, this prophetic tradition, how does it go against reality? How is it not a representation of the actual state of affairs? Uh, I just wouldn't say end. reality in in this in the time of um, six hundred uh, after uh, uh, after Jesus Christ probably in the time of Muhammad. I'm, I'm, I'm saying about um, uh, it can come from from uh, it, from a divine uh, from a um, the best what, human in uh, what what history has known. No, <laughs> I said that um, I, I, it, I'm not saying that it it is not. Um, 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 with reality, I'm saying that I'm not proud to uh, to to follow uh, no, someone say that. who did such acts. But, so, yeah, bro, yeah. You, so you, I'm you, clear in my point. Ava, you did say that. You did say uh, the hadith goes against reality. So you can't say I didn't mm, say that. Yeah, but that. that's that's what I meant. Uh, the reality of today. Okay. Not of this. Okay. Let, okay. He's he's more than welcome to change his position or rearticulate what he meant. No, but he has to that's acknowledge he's changing his position. He can't just. Yeah. No, like I'm, I'm trying to that. explain to you in in a um, better way. Yeah, I, I so think what you mean is misunderstanding. Yeah, I, French fries. I think what you mean is that the hadith goes against moral reality. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yeah, it can come. It can't come from the best human uh, that history has known, as, as Islam uh, claims that Muhammad is. Okay, well, there's a few things to unpack here. The first thing is, I would like to ask you a question. What do you think is immoral about the hadith? Number one, and number two. What normative ethical theory are you using in order to judge that this hadith is immoral? Um, I, I, I can't, I, I'm still um, frustrated about someone um, getting someone out of a grave, even if you hate him, if you consider that this guy is a hypocrite, getting him out of, of, of the grave and uh, place, placing him on, 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 on your knee and putting your saliva in his mouth and shrouding his, his own shirt. I, and uh, it is based on today's um, morality. Okay, yeah. so 
there's, there's a few things here. The first thing is, it seems to me that you haven't thought about this from a kind of normative ethical point of view. You're more just emotionally reacting to a specific circumstance, yeah? And there's nothing yeah, wrong true. with that. Good. It's very good that you've acknowledged that. I respect that. Now, when we talk about morality, there's a few things that we can talk about here. If we see that the actions and the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are a source of our morals, then that wouldn't be a problem for someone who accepts the fact that the teachings of the hadith or the practices of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, are in fact moral by virtue because of where they came from. Because we believe that hadith and Quran is revelation and specifically commands are moral commands because we believe the divine commands are in line with the nature of the divine and the nature of the divine is that he is al-bar he is the source of all goodness he is al-hakim he is the wise he is al-alim he is the, the knowing and so on and so forth so what the ulama what the scholar would say is that they wouldn't take this hadith in isolation and reduce islam to a particular hadith just like one scholar said once Islam is not one hadith. What they do is they take all of the prophetic traditions and all of the verses about a specific topic, in this case, a particular moral topic, and they would make an analysis based on all the evidences. So to take one hadith in isolation is extremely problematic and it's reductionist in nature, and it doesn't represent the moral reality of the life of the Prophet ﷺ or the, the Quran or Islam in general That's one thing to understand The other thing to understand is That do you know the moral variables of this hadith? Because the Islamic tradition is like a virtue ethics tradition What does that mean? It means that for many a hadith There is always usually some type of context That needs to be understood And that it goes with many type of ethical traditions so before we make a judgment on a particular hadith, I think it's very important for you to investigate what is the moral context of this prophetic tradition. You need to really understand that. Now you're alluding to the fact, and I'm not aware of this hadith, so I have to read it. Yeah, where is it? Let me find this hadith so we know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I can send you the link. It's it's a, it's a standard website, sunnah.com. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, and how, and how did they explain it? I, there's no explanation here, just uh, in English and Arabic. Um, this is in, in private chat. Okay, so. Okay, let me check. Go on, go carry. Sorry, Hamza, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, so, so even if we don't know the specific details of this hadith, it's important for you to understand what I'm telling you because these are concepts that are very important in order for you to be empowered to understand the Islamic tradition in a more profound way, yeah? So yeah. you need to understand the moral and ethical variables before we make a particular judgment. And for instance, I've just looked online very quickly. When you look online, there's actually a moral context and there are certain variables that you have to understand. So that's a very important point that you need to consider. Notwithstanding, just take that to one side. It's very important to consider this. If one believes that the Qur'an is from Allah, the Prophet's statements and actions are also inspired, they're also revelation, then by virtue of that, these things are going to be moral, whether you like them or not, <laughs> right? Yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah, yeah that's one way of looking at it, that's true. Right. How did you come across in, in a one way, How did you come across uh, it? Can, can I just add something? Um, uh, ex Muslims um, <laughs> group of um, uh, sparking the hadith <laughs> that I've put in, in the link. Yeah, so you just tried to find the most ridiculous sounding hadith you could and tried to cling to that as your excuse. Yeah? Oh, the, I put, what's, what's wrong what? about that? You, you do the same thing to Christianity. It? It's not the way French you do it's not the way you investigate truth, mate. French fries, uh, uh, can I just mention okay. something? Mm -hmm. From what I recall regarding this narration, even though that that person was a hypocrite, the Prophet actually showed him respect at his funeral and mentioned that um, uh, I think he even uh, prayed for his forgiveness as far as I can recall. 
Now, the act of saliva, etc., was not humiliation. As it, this is off the top of my head, because mm-hmm. even when the prophet's aunt died, the prophet lied down in her grave before she could, uh, before she was lowered into the grave as an act of mercy, because the prophet was blessed. So I don't believe um, this is a interpretation so. that you got from scholars. I think you're giving your own interpretation to this narration. Now, you mentioned earlier that for these narrations, you also read the scholarly explanation. So could you give us a scholar that said that this narration was about humiliating the hypocrite? Because I think um, you're just giving it your own spin. No, I, uh, for this one, I just, um, I'm just um, a, a, a reading the hadith. It says, um, no, black no, no, and no, white, spitting spit saliva. Why would you spit no, saliva? You Why would you take someone? So, so yeah, you're proven you don't understand. Right, right. Here's your problem. Here's your problem. You see saliva as something bad, whereas mm-hmm. as, uh, the saliva of the Prophet was something blessed. It was something, subhanAllah. So I, I, I don't know if you're a Christian, but Jesus used these saliva to heal people as well. This is in the New Testament. So if you're coming from an atheistic pers- uh, perspective, then you're giving it your own spin, but we don't, we don't find your spin valid. So yeah. you have to tell us according to um, our... Um, what's called scholarly tradition, yeah, exactly. our explanations, our context, if there's something wrong with it. It's, it's like but you I, did, Zach, you asked him a simple question. French fries, you reckon that the scholars, you went to the scholars and you looked for their opinions and this. So you haven't got an opinion on this from the scholars. Uh, say again. So you haven't got an opinion from the scholars on this. Have you looked at what the scholars have said on this hadith? Uh, this hadith in particular, no, but many no, others, yes. you haven't. So this interpretation is just your interpretation, mm-hmm. thinking saliva is a bad thing, therefore digging him up and putting saliva in his mouth is humiliating him. And yeah, I definitely true. recall that the, even though that person was a hypocrite, the Prophet still showed him respect at his funeral. I, I remember this from when I'm reading the Siva literature. So definitely, if, if saliva was involved, according to the narration, it was in a sense of mercy, not in the sense of humiliation. So you gave your own interpretation and claimed at the start that you read the scholarly explanations of these narrations. So yeah. that's like, in a sense, um, that's not really... Um, um, yeah. Um, I think uh, the, the, the context will, will always justify itself. If you, 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 can, you can't think that they will, they will somehow betray Muhammad and say that they, 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 he did and everything. So sometimes, yeah, we, 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 we have the right to see things from outside, maybe, to, to give it more. No, but the point here no, is that... We have, think scholars think look at things. we have scholars who look at these things and like, you know, look at all of the hadith with regard to this. What was the saliva of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if this is, this hadith is authentic? What was I it, just was it, it, was it a derogatory thing to do? Yeah, but French fries, I think what's very important for you to understand here, and it, and it comes across in your statement, is you're saying, you know, if the, it, when there's context, it's always going to explain things. It's, it's in, and you're saying that you should see, it's okay to see things from the outside. No one is saying that you don't have a have a right to basically see things from the outside. But what we're yeah. saying here is for you to be just, to be fair, and to have some kind of epistemic humility, and you have an epistemic duty to truly understand the hadith properly if you're going to make a judgment about it. For, for example, if I read one statement from Shakespeare and I make a moral judgment, for example, when Shakespeare says to be or not to be, um, whether it's noble in the minds of man to withstand the slings and arrows of outrageous fortunes or to bear up arms and by doing so end them, something like that. Yeah, I haven't memorized it, but not properly. But the point is, if I just took that statement, I was a reductionist, I would say that Shakespeare is com- is promoting violence and he's an extremist, right? So I know this is a crude example, but it's very important because we have an epistemic duty and we have a duty to knowledge to understand not only the narration, but all the moral variables and the context in order to make a proper judgment. What it seems to me here is that from a, maybe subconsciously, you don't want to understand the context. You don't want to make a proper judgment. It seems to me that there is already something going on. I don't know what it is, but it's something for you to explore and you should stand in the possibility that you may have that. And I could be wrong. But it seems to me, just by what you just said, that you already want it to be wrong. You already don't want to believe in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You already want to make him out to look bad and immoral, and you're basically trying to use this hadith as a means for that. Now, I would say, in the interest of justice and epistemic humility and epistemic duty, a duty to knowledge, that's a huge disservice to yourself. 
and a huge disservice to the Islamic tradition as well. So it's very important for you to really stand in the possibility that what I'm saying now may have some truth to it. Because the way you're coming across is that. Does that make sense, French fries? Well, in 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 one way, that's that, that can be true. But but if the thing is, if if you follow those scholars and accept and um, try to accept any justification they give, inside the justification, of course, it, it gives reason. But the thing is, the trick is, you have to compare it with the outside, with the reality outside, with the kind of world we, we dream of. So oh, when oh, it comes. You. French fries, French fries. What's your world view? The world view is is the best uh, of things um, the, no, we what's can your get uh, today. Are you, are you a Christian? No, no. Um, are you an uh, agnostic? Yeah, I said agnostic. Agnostic. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. You, so you don't so know God exists or not? Is that your position? Oh. Uh, true. So, when right. we, for example, when you see how they um, just uh, justify um, apostasy, but can I just ask you a question, French fries? Mm. Are, are you measuring what happened in the 6th century in Arabia to 21st century world? Is that what you're trying to do? Uh, sorry, say again? Are you trying to measure the 6th century, 6th century Arabia to the 21st century? Is that what you're trying to do? And using the standard of the 21st century to measure the past? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Well, I was... To, um... no, is that what you're doing? They, they say that it's um, the truth for all time, so therefore... Um, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Is that right what you're doing? Uh, kind of. Right, so you know it's a logical fallacy to do that, isn't it? Uh, why not? Is, is it a logical fallacy of presentism or something? You, you, you can't use a yardstick of the 21st century to measure what happened in the past, because the, as an agnostic, what, what, what's, what's your basis of morals? Where would you get it from? No, what, do you, are, what do you accept as morally correct? Why we can make an exception compared to no, today, you, to the, today's you, morality no, no, is that French because French French it claims to be valid for French all French time, French in forget, all forget. places. Look, That's why French we can... Rice. Here's the problem. It's the lens you're looking through. Okay, so let's try to... Because I think you're looking through the wrong lens and you're seeing the wrong image because of that. And this is what Hamza is alluding to as well. So... Let, let, let's understand how you view the world. So how do you understand morality and its basis? Where, 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 do you, where does that come from? I, on um, uh, my own uh, explanation, and it's a very modest thing, is that morality is, uh, is, um, is both, both uh, subjective and objective. No, but where so, do you wait, 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 wait. So, so, sorry, sorry, Hamza. Um, sorry, no, 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 no. So, French fries, you're saying that morality is both objective and subjective. Can you, can you make us understand what you mean by that? Okay, uh, this is my modest um, answer. Uh, I think it has subjective interpretations based on objective facts. That's it. Okay, so give me an example of a moral objective fact. Um, well, the um, if if you can just let me do this in a nutshell, the the the, the, the um, interpretations of everyday life are subjective, but they are uh, they have to be, and they are of course based on uh, objective facts, which can be uh, they are objective because uh, they are based they can be uh, tested by science by uh, they are okay. Very, okay. Very, very, think, <laughs> wait, 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 okay. Oh, French fries. Tested by you're, science. You're, you're getting a bit messy now, yeah. Stick to moral facts. I don't don't worry about life. Okay. Don't worry about life could be subjective. Focus on moral facts because the minute you're saying now science, you can test these these things. With all due respect, science, if you study the philosophy philosophy of science, science generally speaking, from a meta-ethics point of view, meaning concerning objective morality, science cannot answer those questions. Science is amoral. It, not immoral, it's amoral. It can't deal with meta-ethics. And this is why it's in the realm, the broader realm of metaphysics, yeah? So meta-ethics is about things like, you know, what is the nature of a moral value? Is it objective or subjective? That's where you have ideas such as moral realism and moral anti-realism. And when we say a moral is objective, we're basically saying that a moral value or moral property is mind-independent. For example, take the, the the genocide in the 1940s. 
if the whole world were to agree that that was a good thing, it would still be an evil thing. Because that is, uh, when we say something is objective morally, a moral value is objective, it means it's mind independent. We don't care if the whole world were to agree that genocide is good, it's always going to be bad. So you bring uh, science into the equation with all due respect makes it very fuzzy. If, yeah, I think if you just, yeah. I think it may be better, let me just finish. I think mm -hmm. it may be better if you just simply say, I don't know because, and I'm saying this with respect, uh, I'm saying this with respect, you should say, I just don't know because the minute you start, I, someone asks you a question, a question about morality, and then you get into the kind of, oh, life is subjective, but then after you could test things, and you're talking about something that is actually nothing to do with morality per se. So do you see what I'm trying to say here? So um, I think the main question here is, and I think this is something that you should consider uh, very deeply. Just let me give an um, example, uh, clear, make clear my point. Yeah, okay, sure. So well, what I'm trying to, to, um, to preach when it comes to um, morality is that um, the, the objective facts are neuroscientific ones, biological, bi biological ones, th therefore scientific ones. We evolved in a manner, uh, think, by evolution, so that we, if, if you touch, a how, uh, a how, uh, you put your hand on fire, somehow you have pain. This can be tested by, by an MRI. Well, you can see how, yeah, no, this is the objective facts. This is a fact. So, um, when the day where we will not feel pain, uh, when we put our French hand in fire, fries, French fries. those French facts fries. will change. I don't, I don't call you French day. fries or potato waffle, yeah, because you're kind of waffling now, yeah, mate. So, okay, that, make your point. Basically, right. evolution is the reason he rejects the report and thinks it's bad. Uh, am I hearing right? No, um, no, I, I don't think he's saying that. I think, I think what French fries is saying is that he's trying to create a kind of evolutionary uh, perspective or grounding for objective moral values. But I think there's, there's a major problem here. Let's, let's unpack two things that you said about evolution. Firstly, you're saying evolution in some way can be a basis for our morality, objective morality. This is very problematic. Let me, let me explain why. Because our morals evolved because of, according to the Darwinian mechanism, based on certain biological conditions. If we were re and under precisely different conditions, we would have a different set of, set of morals. For example, even Darwin explained this. He said, if we're reared under precisely the same conditions as the hive bees, we would think it's okay to kill our fertile daughters, for example. Now, if you protract that and you extend that to other examples, if we were to basically be, uh, evolve just like the nurse shark, we would think it's okay to rape women because that's what nurse shark do, according to National Geographic. They bite the fin of the shark and they wrestle before they mate with, with its mate. So that loses moral meaning and it doesn't make it objective because it's subject to specific biological conditions. So in order for things to be morals to be objective in a Darwinian sense, in a naturalistic sense, they have to be species independent, yeah? And that's very hard to articulate with what you've just said. The other thing is natural selection can provide the capacity for us to formulate ethical rules, but it doesn't provide what you call the moral ontological foundation for objective morals. Anyway, point is this, I think, you, I don't know why your name has changed to Potato Waffle, but it's quite, <laughs> it's quite representative. I, I changed it. I thought it was apt. Oh, you changed it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was wondering that as well. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so French fries, li listen to this. This is my sincere advice, human being to human being, because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, which is very interesting because people ignore all the other hadith. He said in a hadith that's narrated by Bukhari, and it is Sahih, but it's in Tariq Al-Kabir. He said, love for linnas, for humanity, what you love for yourself. So this is genuine. I'm, I want to be committed to your well-being here because as Anawawi said, the famous classical scholar and the Maliki scholar, Ibn Taqiq Al-Eid, they talk about that we must be committed to the goodness and guidance of all people. So here is my commitment to you. You need to really just stop talking about these things for a while. I know a lot of things are emotional. There may be other things going on that form the kind of psychological driving force in order for you to say these things. But at the end of the day, and this is what Hamza was basically saying, what is your source of morality? 
If we can show that the Quran is from Allah, we can show that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final Prophet, and this is a truth, then whatever comes from truth is true, and that includes moral truths. And then when you explore these moral truths and you don't reduce them to one particular verse or one particular hadith and you consider all of the Islamic tradition together because it's all interconnected and you look at the true context, it would also make sense to what you call your innate disposition, your fitrah. And, you know, I'm even seeing on the comments, people are saying the Prophet sallallahu didn't spit, right? That's an addition, right? That's not in the original Arabic. So again, when you look at context, things change. So from this perspective, I think you should take this very, very seriously. And my advice would be, you should just get off this platform and let someone else speak and just uh, email us after this, have some time of reflection of what has happened, email us, and then we'll be able to get back to you in a way that is conducive to sincere dialogue. Because at the moment, it's going to become mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's going to be mashed potatoes, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that in a rude way. I'm just saying it's like, subhanAllah, <laughs> you know, what are we doing with this? Let's, 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 be, let's just be honest here, right? So, um, you know. Yeah, I, I would agree. See, the, the, po the point I was trying to make to you, um, I was going to make potato then. The point I was going to make to you, French fry, right, is the fact that your morals are based upon what society says is morally correct. That's what your morals are based on. Like it, don't like it. Your social condition is what's influencing you to believe what is morally correct today. And that if that is the case, then you have to accept in a time where other society accepts something as morally correct. You can't say that particular society is immoral. So I'll give you an example of that as a present day thing. Where, 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 which country are you in, um, French Fry? Uh, France. France. What's the legal age of sex in France? Um, maybe um, 14 or 16, I I'm not sure. 14, yeah? See, yeah. that's morally wrong according to the people of the UK because uh, that's rape because 16 is the legal age, yeah? So according mm -hmm. to Britain, according to Britain, you French are immoral. Now, do yeah, we have the right to be immoral? Huh? That's why it's subjective. Well, that's, that's the whole point then. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's so, what I said. It's, so, it's, so the interpretation you're, is, is subjective, you're, you're but the groundings are scientific facts. They can no. be biological no. ones. Uh, what's the scientific it's fact? Nuance. Of the age? Sorry. It's no what's the science is subjective. The what's the scientific that's fact? Sorry? What's the scientific fact about the age of girls then? Explain to me. Why, why is no. it 16 here in the UK, 18, I think, in Italy, 14 in France? What's the scientific fact going on there? Well, the, 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 I said that uh, it's subjective, but there are some groundings so on your science fact? that we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't cross. Uh, what's, like, the uh, causing pain. what's the scientific uh, the, fact? There is no scientific uh, there fact. There isn't a scientific fact. One. Yeah, the only one is you have to respect the, 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 the science of pain. and, and uh, so, Right, so are you French immoral then, according to British standards? Mm, according to British, yes. But, yes, you uh, are. So here's the problem you see. Morality can't even cross the English Channel, mate. Forget crossing fourteen hundred years. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But you know well, that was, that's that that's why it's subjective. People are that. trying their best to 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 make no, it. You can't uh, do it though. You just you just said you just said we British will be wrong to call you French immoral because you have a lower age of sex. Yeah, you said we're wrong to do that, and yet you think you're right. To go back 1400 years and tell them they were wrong. He said, who cares? So obviously morality is according to who, whoever's view it is. So basically you gave your own spin on what the Prophet upon him did, but you've got no basis to say that there was anything wrong with that. So do you admit it's just your personal opinion? Yeah, but he, he tried. He's com he compared spitting on the face and I'm in this hadith with, with the two years difference of eight. Uh, uh, French fries. French fries. I'm going to say with all due respect. And if this is just your opinion, who cares? What you yeah, but French fries, you need to understand that you are misreading the hadith. There was no spitting involved. So this is first and foremost, again, I was, I'm bringing back to the point that I raised. Epistemic humility, humility concerning knowledge, and epistemic duty. We have a truth to, to the truth. We have a duty to the truth. This is very important to consider. You can't keep on saying lies about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is not right. And again, it's unpacking some psychological elements that I think that may be involved in your life. I don't know what it is, but you really need to, I would stop now. 
with all due respect. And I was just stay away from social media for two months. And yeah. Yeah. Last, last, last statement. I'm, 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 I'm leaving. I'm giving that last statement. Why, why, why I'm trying, I'm, I'm giving myself the right to 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 compare uh, this subject. But your problem is you're in opposition today, to uh, 19 March, is that Islam claims uh, the the uh, the, uh, the uh, he claims Islam claims to be uh, valid for all time and all places. Yes. So look, that's the basics look, of this Sharia. Right. Like I, they can I, be applied. I, so we have the right to to compare them. Yes, I, I'm not. We're not saying you don't have a right. That's why you're here. You have every right, but you don't have a right within the framework of ethics to understand the truth, to misread a hadith deliberately. Number one, to not come on to not to come onto this live stream without talking about the context, which means that you already are pre-framing the hadith, and also you don't really have a right in the kind of ethical framework of things. You like to talk about ethics to basically jumble up uh, your kind of philosophical understanding of you know morality subjective objective neuroscience science it was the it was just like a mixed pickles in turkish you know they call it turshu <laughs> it's like mixed pickles man so what you need to do and i'm saying this once again is just have a think about certain few points that we've all made number one if the Quran is from Allah, the Prophet ﷺ is, is the final Prophet and we can show that, then they become your source of morality because what comes from truth is true and these include moral truths. Number two, when you examine a hadith or even verses of the Quran, you have every right to examine them but you have to understand the moral context or the context to make an appropriate judgment. And we're not telling you what the context should be. I'm saying as an intellectual, as someone who wants to be a thinking human being, you examine what the context is. And once you do so, you will see things in a better picture. The other thing you need to understand and take into consideration is that you need to not always refer to online and do your own learning. And when you see something online, find out, find out is it really true? Because it seems to me that you attributing spitting to the Prophet ﷺ in this particular hadith is actually non-existent in the hadith itself from what i'm gathering here yeah? but nevertheless the point is try and make your own assessment the other thing is when you said things like it's subjective i don't care it's my right and all these kind type of emotional ploys that you're coming across with this for me is a psychological indicator that you have already made up your up your mind and you have maybe some other social pressures or psychological context that you're bringing onto the table, but you're not really being authentic with us. And I think it's quite evident in your statements. So what I would say, I would even suggest to Hamza, that I think you should go and just reflect on this and maybe someone come on board because uh, otherwise, you know, the other can Hamza, I, I might, start roar, might start roaring a bit more. <laughs> I'll just leave you with one bit of advice, yeah. Never trust the next to say good things about you. Take care, mashed potato. Honestly. His name deteriorated. <laughs> Welcome to the arena. Yeah, so this oh is the. Uh, oh he changed his position twice. As soon as you see, as soon as you try to pin people, they try to squirm, uh, and I like to hold them to their position. And um, did you see what happened as soon as we challenged his worldview? He's absolutely clueless, and he's got no measuring yardstick to, to determine anything. The most interesting thing for me was at the start, he said he read the reports and he read the scholars' explanations. Yes. But then he admitted that he just read the isolated report itself and gave his own um, interpretation of it. Now, that's the first thing when it comes to the Hadith corpus is you never read an isolated report because there could be eight, nine other reports that the scholars look at to get the information to understand what's going on. So you can never just go to one report and read it and just um, come out with an interpretation. So I hope if... Um, mashed potato or french fries or whatever else hamza named him no he didn't take his name seriously himself did he he didn't take his name seriously so you know you come onto a stream and you come up with a french fries and we keep calling you french fries it's ridiculous calling you french fries mate then he starts waffling then obviously i'm thinking french fries potato waffle okay and then hamza starts mashing in i'm thinking wow well, we're on this potato flex i couldn't resist no i mean you know, my strategy when I speak to people like this, and hopefully it came across, was to get them to have insights within themselves. Mm. Because sometimes we have psychological driving, uh, psychological drivers that 
push so-called intellectual stances, and this is known in cognitive science, that you may be intellectually convinced about something, but really the basis of that conviction is purely emotional, psychological, yeah? And you get these indicators the way people speak. Now, I'm not trying to be some kind of psychologist and, and you know, do some kind of... No, no, uh, no, bro, you, you, yeah, you, you but, spotted but, it. But, but I want him to have insights. And that's why if you repeat those things in the best way possible, hopefully with good manners, this today might be the best thing that ever happened to him because it could be Inshallah. something that gets him to think. And then he's like, you know what? Forget this French fries business. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, maybe he's affected by French society, um, you know, because there's a lot of pressure to, uh, yeah, know, the, the, ICT, the form of heavy secularism in France really puts pressure onto Muslims about their morality and their yeah, worldview. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't have good people around him. I'm not giving him excuses, but I'm trying to say that maybe situations like this today could give him those a chance to have those insights so he could continue his journey and say, you know what, yeah. I was wrong, man. Let me let me let me let me re re reinvestigate Islam. Let me let me accept Islam again because you know these these things that I'm I'm doing is is purely nafsi. It's shahawat. It's based on blameworthy desires and so on and so forth. It's based on for a negative peer pressure because you have to understand, bro, that in social psychology, you know, the social norm is developed because of two main things: that we have a need to belong and we have a need to feel certain. If we can't get that belonging from our sub, from our immediate group, we're going to try and find that belonging from like the dominant group, like the secular group, if you like. And the need to feel certain, we may have some questions about Islam, but our, our immediate group, like the imams and the Muslim community, are not providing answers. So they may go, they may go to the dominant group, maybe the naturalists or the secularists or the, the ex-Muslims, like whatever the case with. may be. Yeah. So yeah. To, just to get a sense of certainty. So this is very important to understand as well because a lot of these things are, are entirely social, psychological. And we need to sometimes unpack that and you know give people a sense of empowerment and insight and reflection so they can continue the journey in a way that is more conducive to guidance, inshallah. But at the end of the day, it's all up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. No, no, it's really nice. It's, that's, that's why you were here, Hamza, because I, I, I'm a bit rough. <laughs> I like to shake that tree. I, 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 like, I like to shake the... Some, you know, you remember the movie Aeroplane? Remember yeah. the airplane, and that yeah. woman's panicking, yeah. and everyone's slapping her. <laughs> May both me and Hamza be on Hamza Zawz this one day. Inshallah, we don't condone slapping anyone, especially, <laughs> women, especially. Oh, we women. don't mind slapping uh, intellectually here. To be honest, some people do need it. Honestly, they need, they need definitely time and a place for everything. Indeed, indeed. Right, just before we continue, I need to check the likes because we've got Mashallah. We're on twelve hundred viewers. Uh, and the likes, I don't know if they're reflecting it or not. So people know uh, this is Hamza's Den. You don't just come here and just free view. And you need to like what you're seeing. You need to share it with your non-Muslim friends, colleagues, even enemies that you're on Facebook having debates with. You need to like the video. You, you need to let YouTube know you're enjoying it. So inshallah, it will get suggested and other people will come along and we might get some more fruitful guests, inshallah. So I'm going to check now. 1,200 people watching. There's got to be at least a thousand likes. Got to be. You know, we're not. We're, you know, we're not asking you to share the link. Just like it. Thumbs up. There could be 200 trolls here, so I'll, I'll take a thousand. Uh, we've got a few more guests at the back. I'm sure that guy's a Muslim, but anyway, one second. Yeah, you were really nice with him, Hamza. It was honestly it's good you were here. To give him that kind of reality thing. Stay away. Step away from social media, mate. <laughs> well, as a general advice, the default position of the DAO, the default, I'm not saying it should always be the case, is always to be compassionate and soft. Now, Musa alayhi salam, he was told by Allah to go to Pharaoh, one of the worst creatures, and Allah says, speak layyinan, softly to him. But obviously, when you go a few more verses down the line, Musa gets a little bit more like Hamza. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so there is a context, and that's the beauty of our tradition. It's a, it's based on moral variables, it's like virtual ethics. Is there, there's a moral context, but as the default position, it should be based on compassion, kindness, and also forbearance. Because what's a beautiful verse, bro? Wallahi, it's a beautiful verse in Surah Fusilat, verse thirty-three. Allah says, who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah, does righteousness, and then says, I'm one of the Muslims. Then verse 34 is about da'wah. So it's like somewhat connected. Allah says, 
good and evil are not the same. Repel by that which is better. And between two people there was hatred, it would turn to intimate friendship. Now the ulama say the word repel is not followed by a direct object in the Arabic. So it's not saying repel evil, it's repel anything by that which is better. And what is better is that which is more virtuous and that which is more beautiful. So Muslims, especially du'at, must be virtuous and must be beautiful, right? So, and that's the default position. But obviously, when if people, for example, insult the Prophet, or they, 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 they go outside of the kind of tolerance boundaries and everyone has their own boundaries, then you have to change your stance and your strategy for sure. Uh, but the default position is kindness, rahmah, and forbearance. Yeah. But sometimes, it is, it, it, although it is indirect, Dawah, it, it's more when it's polemical, it's, it's, it's a different flex, I believe. It, it, when, you, when you're trying to challenge someone's position, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, as long as you're and, not and of course, you look, if someone comes uh, on and being sincere, yeah. intellectually honest, you can have a night. But if you can see them moving the goalposts all the time, trying to shift paradigms, trying to win score points, but based upon nothing, basically playing pigeon chess with you, I think people have to realize that wake up, mate. We do. So, this is the analogy I like to use I shake the tree, and you guys pick up the fruit and see what's going on. That's generally how um, it works. <laughs> so you, so you, so you, yeah. Because they, they come yeah, up with points. That's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, right. Someone called blocked. Oh my god. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm back now. So yeah, that was interesting. So who's next? <laughs> uh, blocked. Blocked. You muted. Oh, not you. Oh my god. This geezer PA. He, he just comes in every stream. Never says anything. Just Jake, Jake, Jake. What? <sighs> this is good. Mustafar yeah. Mahani. Okay. Yeah. Alaikum. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, my dear brothers, um, yes, my name is Mujtaba, and um, I'm a former atheist, and uh, I converted to Islam, and actually um, I'm a former so-called apostate as well. I was born in a Muslim family, and at the age of 25, I started to uh, question existence of God, and after a few days, because of lack of knowledge, I decided that God doesn't exist, <clears throat> but um, Alhamdulillah, I got time and the opportunity to learn. And um, can you turn your mic up, mate? We can't hear you. Uh, do you hear me, brother? No, You're very quiet. Is it better now? What, 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 no? Are you Muslim? If you come on, if you're a Muslim, come onto the stream. You're in the wrong stream. How about now? Is it better? Yes, I can hear you. Are you Muslim? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Are you Muslim? Yes, yes. I said, uh, I don't know if you hear me now. Do you hear me yeah. now, brother? I, I no, heard okay. you. I heard you. But this stream is yes. for non-Muslims. Yes, I just uh, want to uh, say that um, because I was... Uh, brother, 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 please, yeah, please. Yeah. This stream is for non-Muslims. Yeah, but uh, I say I That's was... Uh, There's no buts. There's no buts. Salam alaikum. Okay, salam alaikum. Salam. I think you boys have scared all the guests away, you know that. There's no one in the back chat. Come on, guys. Where are you? Where, where, is anyone in the, anyone oh, hiding in the comments section? Maybe we could, we could have a debate. You could moderate me debating Zakir on... Uh, I don't on know. Old Testament prophecies. Oh, I, that's not my field. I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> he, he, he'll beat me so easily on that one. With <laughs> nah, no way. Mashallah. I'm your student. No, not at all, bro. Not at all. Um, let's have a debate on what's a better football team, Man United or Man City? I'm not <laughs> into football, so it doesn't make a difference to me. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that challenge. What do you mean by better? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good <laughs> one. I mean, better now, um, historically, uh, what, 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 I, I do you want to play it? I, I only said it because I, I think you like Man United, right? I'm a Man United fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I was pretty sure City never won the European Cup, so... I, I was win. trying to trigger you, bro. I was trying to trigger yeah. you. <laughs> if I was into football, I'd have to say Liverpool, obviously, but... <laughs> One-season wonders, mate. They're one-season wonders. See, that, that would reverse it then. I wouldn't go to the history. I'd go to the um, current si situation. 
But you know what? This is a very this is a very good philosophical question because if you refer to history as part of your kind of evidence to show that you're great, that means that your identity is contingent on your past, and that's that's an interesting point. Is that true? Is your identity contingent on your past? I, is Zakir Hussein today the same person he was ten years ago, or is his identity now part of his own past, or is is that somebody totally uh, different? I would say to I would say uh, uh, as a revert, anyone who knew me prior to Islam doesn't know me now. So if, if they think they can talk about me, how I was, and what I, mm. it has no bearing on who I am. So I, I would say you 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 are who you are today. So, so Hamza, therefore, Man United is rubbish because the history doesn't mean anything. <laughs> well, no, well, that, no, but wait there. First of all, I, I said the criterion. What's the criteria? Who's yeah, no, I'm only kidding, man. I'm kidding. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, listen, man. This Hamza's there. We'll go for it. So the new criteria is, that's why I asked you, didn't I? I, I asked you to clarify. Are you talking about historically or this season? This season, City mm -hmm. are better than Historically, oh, Liverpool, yeah? Do you guess, you, no, no. Tw United yet. have won 20, 20 times the title more than Liverpool. They were more European Cups, though. Liverpool won with style, though. Honestly. So what I have to do is that I have to let Muslims on if the non-Muslims are afraid. I'm just going to see if there's anyone in the tr in the comment section. <sighs> well, at least you are going for four hours. Alhamdulillah. Well, so while we're I... waiting for somebody, um, Hamza, oh. I've I, I got a copy of your book. Um, I'm looking for the right time. I want to start reading it, um, inshallah, and that I'll give you some feedback on it. Um, yeah, what's it called please, again? Uh, Divine uh, Mirage. The Mirage of Atheism, yeah. Yeah, if that's the one. Wanna, that. if, if you're an insomniac, <laughs> then it would be, be good therapy for you. <laughs> if you can't sleep, <laughs> then maybe reading it will, will, will put you to sleep, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it like eight eight books down the list. Yeah, no, yes, you know, you know, these days, you know, when people say that, oh, I don't have time to read, but if you look at the time that you're scrolling and reading comments and message and messages, yeah, Twitter and WhatsApp messages, you're technically reading like half a book a day, maybe, right? True. Um, which is very interesting. So, yeah, it's very good that you got eight books to go through because people don't even have books, bro. They just go through like eight minutes of scrolling. Yeah. So Definitely. we have to revive, and it's a it's a it's our Islamic and intellectual tradition to actually refer to books because a lot of people they go on YouTube, which is great, but I think they should have different phases to their journey, and those phases should include reading our literature, and also connecting themselves with the scholars as well because our tradition is a scholarly tradition, and wallahi, Definitely. wallahi, I believe this, you will never, you, what you learn from a scholar, you will never learn from a book. Yeah, because when you interact with someone, their state of being, who they are, really affects you. You could really internalize humility just by connecting yourself with people of knowledge or people who are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a Quranic statement. This is a this is based on the tradition of Islam. You know, so many hadith about, you know, your environment, your friends, the Quran focuses this on, on this as well. Um, so it's something for us to really take seriously, inshaAllah. Uh, someone's saying the link might not be working, so let me just make sure it's working. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, definitely. Um, physical books as well. You can't touch physical books. Even PDFs, uh, they're great, convenient, but the pleasure you get from physical books is just um, unbelievable. Yeah. And and I'm the like book you. knowledge. Like, when I actually read books, I feel empowered. And when there's a couple of weeks when I neglect books, I just feel um, intellectually um, weak again. So... Uh -huh. May Allah bless you, bro. So do you debated James White, right? I debated uh, Dr. James White twice. Um, David it Wood go? once. It, it went good, alhamdulillah. Um, I, I studied hard. And um, I feel like um, the topic was covered in a, in a good way. Dr. Ooh. James White, a, a, a lovely you? guy as well. What was the topic? The first time I debated him was uh, whether the Bible foretells the coming of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The second time was regarding the crucifixion. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. I might check them out, inshallah. I don't know, one second. 
Uh, Shabir, you've just got to join us soon. Let's go scare away the uh, <laughs> the non-Muslims even more. Oh, brother Mansour, mashallah, sent me the hadith of the Prophet. Sasa. So one second. So uh, if you're listening, uh, potato, uh, narrated Jabir, the Prophet Sasan came to the grave of Abdullah bin Ubay after his body was buried. The body was brought out and then the Prophet put his saliva over the body and clothed it in his shirt. SubhanAllah. So by clothing it in his shirt demonstrates this was not a, a humiliation or a mockery or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it was an act of mercy, basically, because SubhanAllah. So, so, those who believe in prophets believe that the saliva of a prophet is blessed. This so is more of an act of mercy. Yeah, and clothing it in his shirt as well. Taking his shirt. And shirt. And this so, goes to show that when you deliberately miss out the context or you have a misreading, you're not being true to, to yourself and, and you don't want the truth. And it really exposes a kind of psychological dynamic on you know what's really going on, which is you just you want it to be wrong. You want to by any means necessary, necessary show that the Prophet Islam was immoral or show that Islam is not true. And that is not an intellectual position, it's an emotional one and something else something else is going on. So yeah, brilliant. Right. Him, okay. I'm, so I'm gonna say something, yeah? Are you ready? I'm about to set oh. this place on fire. All right, because okay. we've, got, we've got a guy coming on, right? And he, he it, if, if I knew this guest was coming on, right? And someone said to me, you know this guest is coming, of all the brothers, mashallah, into the dawah and said, who would you want on your panel? And it's you, bro. Why, who is this guest? This is, uh, he calls himself your way or Yahweh tested by fire, I believe. But here he's calling himself me, myself, and moi. He didn't get How you guys doing, man? How are you guys doing? I have a question. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Um, I have a question about Surah 4157. Because uh, as a Muslim, um, you should be able to trust your God, right? So if your God is able to uh, make something seem a certain way, and it wasn't that, how can you trust him for anything else? Any of his promises, his judgments, his uh, revelation, his... Uh... So, so, so you're talking about the crucifixion, and, and you're thinking... Yes. So one second, you one second. 157. Like, 7157 is about the prophecies of the prophet and the Torah and the gospel. Four, four, oh, one, okay, crucifixion. Right. Okay. So, right, so, so here's the problem he's going to have. I can foresee it straight away. Um, because he said his point here is this this is his premise. If, if God can deceive the people at the crucifixion, then why should you trust this God? Yes, it's a, it's a, a question, it's a, but the problem you've got, okay, go ahead. You love the Bible, don't you, mate? Yeah, you got a problem then. So I can't tell him his problem. <laughs> I know, I know what you're gonna say, but it's not a problem for us. Go ahead. All right, go on. Well, what's what we're gonna say? Because uh, you're probably gonna say that uh, in the book of First Kings, or f it says that God deceived, um, deceived. Who was it? I don't remember the name of the person, but you you're probably gonna say that, which is remedied. Uh, so we're, sorry, we're gonna we're gonna say what? I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. I, you don't, I don't know, know what we're gonna say then. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. Just relax. Don't worry. We'll say what we're going to say. Don't worry. No problem. And then you no can problem. respond to that. Go ahead. Who do you believe God deceived by denying the crucifixion? Everybody that was a witness in the, on that day. Okay, so Every. can you give me... Okay, so who were the witnesses? Mary. Mary. Who, One example. Who were the witnesses? Uh, Mary, John, and everybody that wrote about it for 600 and some years until Islam came. So we have okay. 600 years of... Uh, Deception. Okay, do you have even one eyewitness who was a, a family member of Jesus or a disciple of Jesus who said they believed in a crucifixion? Uh, uh, scripturally? Or is that any, you... any source? Do you have any source of a family member of Jesus or a disciple of Jesus who wrote that they believed that Jesus was crucified? So in other words, they were deceived according to Islam. Do you have any source? I uh, have Mary that, that was crying at, at her crucifixion. Who told you Mary was crying? That's not Mary's words, mate. Uh, no, there's a testimony that sh that's what she saw. Mary. And whose testimony is it? Uh, the book of John. Okay. And said, John was written by who? By John. Okay. John who? John the disciple. No, that's not true. Oh, yeah? we, know, we know academically that the gospel of John was not written by an eyewitness. 
John chapter 21, verse number 14, explicitly denies it was written by eyewitness. So once again, I come back to my question is, you're claiming what what the basis of your uh, initial question was is the Quran denies the crucifixion. So yeah. obviously the God of Islam deceived the family members and the uh, disciples of Jesus. But you've actually got no source from the disciples of Jesus proving that they believe Jesus was actually crucified. That's my uh, point. Let, let, let's, uh, Zakir, let's go back to the John uh, witness. What did what, what was your response to that? John? John chapter 21 is either verse 14 or verse 24. He actually what, it literally what denies... Say? Say it, it says say that it. this is a testimony that we heard from the beloved disciples. So obviously the person who wrote that's not the disciple. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check that out because I, I don't know what you're talking about. Repeat the, the verse, please. It's either John 21, verse 14, or John 21, verse 24. I haven't okay, got none of my books with me. Hmm. Yeah, let me check that out real quick. It's gonna take me uh 15 seconds because this is uh yeah. Okay, so um, while you're checking it out, so I'm going to repeat my question again. Give me one source from a family member of Jesus or a disciple of Jesus where they said that they believe Jesus was crucified. You've got okay. no sources, so no one was Okay, verse, verse 14 is, is, not, is not there. So which one is it after that? No. Can you read verse 14? 21, John chapter 21. Verse 14? 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciple. After that, he was risen. Okay, from the dead. verse 24 then. Try verse 24. 20. Okay. Verse twenty four. This is the disciples which testify. This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things, and we know that this, that his testimony is true. And well, we know that, that his that? testimony is true. So obviously, the person who's saying, and we know his testimony is true, is somebody other than that the disciple. So the person who wrote that text is not an eyewitness himself. They're talking about the testimony that they heard. They're not the eye, um, a disciple themselves or eyewitness themselves. Just read biblical scholarship. This is this is the thing you've got to understand, Terry. Yeah. I, that, I don't. Uh, I don't okay, go ahead. Terry, I don't accept Terry, rendering. Go ahead. Terry, 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 Terry. H here's the thing you've got to realize. Yeah. Don't shoot the messengers. Yeah. We're not inventing this. This is not some Islamic invention to attack Christianity. This is the words of your scholars, Christian scholars, people who know the Bible that like you know the Bible. Yeah. Who but are more scholarly in their research and, and they are uh, more critical in their thinking. And they've conceded that the authors of all four gospels are anonymous. Yeah, this, yeah. this, this, is, this is unanimous. This is not like, uh, you know, you might get some um, scholars somewhere trying to argue for it, but the point, the point is the majority of Christian scholarship has conceded this point. So it, it's not an invention by us. And all Zakir is doing you is giving you some reasons why you should think that way. I, I, you know what? I'm going to give you, I don't agree with the, your rendering of the verse, but I have to go read the verse and uh, try to understand the context. Just read the verse slowly to everybody right no, now. No, no. How about this, Zakir? Literally here? denies it. Yeah. Is exactly I'll, I'll read yeah. it. Okay. This is a disciple. You read King James Bible, don't you, uh, Terry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All uh, right. This is a disciple which testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. So who, who who's the we? The people that's reading his book. No, the people's writing it. The person who's writing it. Okay, let's let's. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. Good man. Okay. How about I go to the Old Testament where it says he will be crucified and destroyed? Okay, go to the Old Testament. Yeah, Bismillah. Uh, Isaiah 53, clearly. Okay. Uh, okay. Isaiah 42. Clearly. No, 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 no. Go hey, to hey, one hey, place. You know exactly who one place. Is. Terry, you know exactly Isaiah 53, is. go to that. Uh, the whole chapter. No, no, give, give me give me the clearest verse. Okay, no problem. I'll give you the exact verse. Give me a second here. Okay, verses four, verses five. Okay, what does it say? It says, uh, surely he has borne our grief, carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten by us. Uh, we, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was okay. wounded no, no, for it. our transgression. 
Wait, 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 it's coming. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And uh, verse 9, and he made his grave with the wicked, with the rich okay. and his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his uh, mouth. So verse 9 clearly says that. And I again, I got more verses. I got Isaiah 40. As I have uh, Isaiah 42. Okay, wait, have, wait, uh, wait. Okay, so you've gone to Isaiah 53. One at a yeah? time. One at a time. Okay. Let's just you've gone to Isaiah 53. Okay, verse you've nine. gone to Isaiah 53. Uh, Isaiah 53 is your is your most explicit verse. You can't go to Isaiah 9 6. You can't go to 42. You're stuck with this is your most explicit verse. And if no, this no. is dealt with, so exactly before, okay. before you before you explain yeah. it though, yeah, I want to understand how he, Terry understands it and how, yeah. So just before, just before Zaki gives you his understanding of it, um, tell me how you understand it, Terry. What do you mean? What, uh, the verse, verse nine. What, what do you think that verse is saying? Yes. Verse nine. It says he he would be uh, buried. He would be uh, he would be um, he would be uh, in the grave. He would be dead. No, Isaiah fifty-three. Yeah. Verse nine. Verse nine. Same thing, uh, it says he would be buried. No, you said he'd be bruised by transgressions and all that business. Verse 9. Verse 9, it says he would be, he would have a grave with the dead. Verse 9, he has, uh, and he made his grave with the wicked. So how do you understand it? Basically being, uh, he, he would die. It's very clear. And, and it, it, couldn't mean, it couldn't mean anything else. Does, doesn't leave any room uh, to maneuver. Right. When uh, actually, it actually does. Because if you read some of the biggest scholarship, even in Christendom, such as the International Critical Commentary, that they mention that these verses that seem to be talking about the death of the servant don't necessarily need to be talking about literal death and resurrection, but can be describing someone who comes close to dying but actually surviving. And the hint is even given in, I believe, verse 10, when it says that this same servant is given a prolonged life and he shall see his seed. In other words, he comes close to dying but he's actually he actually survives and he's rewarded by God with long life. So his life's extended. So he survived and he's given children. So that doesn't even apply to the biblical Jesus that you believe in. No, if you're going to read verse 10, first of all, verse 9 says he would be in the grave. So it yeah, goes but, with the resurrection. If, if that yeah. is like your, just but, let me. What you've you got to understand is. What you got to understand is this is where biblical scholarship comes in once again. I, these, say, these same metaphors are used for Israel and other parts of the Bible. Did Israel as a nation literally die and resurrect? Uh, give me the, uh, the very exact word where it says Israel will be in the grave. So no. Give me a verse you that, see, that says that. You see, in, in other metaphors you find in Isaiah 53, such as a lamb led to the slaughter, the Jeremiah says the same thing about himself. Now, Jeremiah didn't die and resurrect, but he said that I was like a lamb led to the slaughter. So these metaphors are all over the Bible for other people. So it's clearly a metaphor. It's not literal death and resurrection. Now, the point is, we can put this all aside. Let's just say this is talking about death and resurrection. Verse 10 says that this servant shall have his life extended and he shall see his seed. Now, you don't believe Jesus had children. So how could you even apply Isaiah 53 to him? Uh, actually, uh, you had the the wrong uh, Hebrew. It, it doesn't say he would see seed as in the way you're saying uh, he would see seed. Uh, if you go to the verse uh, specifically in verse ten, it says uh, it was yet Yahweh is pleased to bruise him. He has put grief when he made an offering for sin. So already there is shown that again he was put to death, his soul, and he shall see his zarah, which is seed. Yeah, he shall see his seed. Did that happen to Jesus? It doesn't. It doesn't say his seed. It, he says he will see seed, which is this not. Is a, uh, this is another this problem with Christians. Oh, okay, oh, no. let me just um, uh, reply to that. This is a, a common um, tactic by Christians because they're not in touch with Semitic roots or languages. Now they're trying to say that it doesn't say his in the Hebrew. It just says he shall see seed, but they don't understand that in Hebrew many times it's implied. Um, the pronoun will be missing, but it's implied. Now, obviously, this person's being rewarded with long life and seed. So is he going to be rewarded with long life and see somebody else's children? It's obviously referring to his own children, which is why nearly every Christian translation translated as he will see his seed, because it's obviously talking about the servant's children, nobody else's children. First first of all, we're, we're, we're dive, and if I get the chance to, to respond, because you're saying a lot of things. Uh, first of all, uh, you're dying. He's not saying a lot of things. He's whoa, 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 Terry, 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 Terry. He's saying one thing. Not a lot okay, of things. Well, it's just okay, one thing. Okay, okay. So let me address one thing. Uh, the the water. 
right. Okay, let's 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 go to to the seed issue. Um, first of all, seed is used in different uh, application. It doesn't have to mean offspring. Uh, Jesus it means himself, offspring everywhere in the Old Testament when uh, the word Zera is used. Uh, where is it used? And it doesn't I'm mean sorry? offspring. Uh, did you just say uh, Zera in all cases mean offspring in the Old Terry. Testament? Terry, oh, when it's referring to humans, yes. Terry, Terry, it's an easy, it's an easy solution to this. Give us another example in the Old Testament where the word seed is used, not meaning offspring. For humans. How about, just, how, just to make this more explicit. How about I give you a couple? In the Greek, um, in the, Greek the word uh, is spermatos. Genesis 1 Spermatos, says, where we get the word sperm from. Uh, 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 Hamza, <laughs> Hamza can tell us about the Greek. Zakir, you just made a statement that it means offspring in every case. I just gave you Genesis 1 11. The first time it's been, it's called the, the seed of plants, seed of fruits. And I just give I you an example. Humans, 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 when it comes to humans. humans wait, wait, one humans. second, one second. I give you an example where Jesus said to himself, he is a seed. His word, he is Give us seed. an example. Listen, Terry, Terry, yeah. you're not going to move the goalpost, mate. I'll make it easy again for you. And listen to what I'm saying. Go in ahead. the Old Testament, so we know Jesus isn't talking in the Old Testament. So forget the New Testament. Okay. In the Old Testament, give us an example where speaking about human beings, the word seed is used to mean other than offspring. That's all you have to do. That is, uh, I would have to do a research on that. Uh, but Right. Uh, because here's I, what I you're would... doing, you see. Here's what you're doing, you see. You're trying okay. to make it in this case mean what you want it to mean. You're trying to change the meaning to something that all throughout the Old Testament always means the same thing. But because it doesn't suit your narrative, you now you have to try and find another another explanation for it. And but I that, will only, about people. <coughs> that will really well, that only work. That will only work. Yeah. If you have another example where the word seed is used for human beings, not meaning children. Yeah. That, that, we that, know that, when that, it says that, Abraham's seed, he's talking about his progeny. We know that. OK. Yeah. So can if I, you can't, if you can't give us another example, you need to justify why you think you can change this one to make it change uh, the meaning that other than what it says in throughout the rest of the Old Testament. You see okay. what the weird thing is? The weird thing yeah, about this is what... To be just one second, to Terry. Let, let me just make my point. Or, or you... okay, one thing I've noticed about the Christian folk especially is that they take things the wrong way around. For example... Now, the verses he was talking about in Isaiah 53, like um, um, seeing the grave like a lamb led to the slaughter, these type, um, these type of um, um, phrases are found all throughout the Old Testament for other people in a metaphorical sense, but they insist in Isaiah 53 is literal. But then the phrase, he shall see seed, is used for other people all over the Old Testament. It's always literal seed, but they, they want to insist that that's metaphorical. So... The phrase that's metaphorical all over the Bible, they insist is literal. And the phrase that's literal all over the Bible, they insist is metaphorical. So in order to make it about Jesus, they have to uh, flip things around. So explain this, Terry. The phrase in Isaiah 53, like a lamb led to the slaughter, Jeremiah used that for himself. So it's clearly metaphorical language as well. The phrase seed, every time it's used for humans, is always talking about physical offspring, something you don't believe Jesus had. So how can you apply Isaiah 53 to Jesus and claim as a proof text that yesterday? Okay. Okay. Um, am I going to be allowed to speak or are you going to interrupt me after five I'm, seconds? I'm quiet. Okay, I'm going to respond to you. Okay, it's, it's, let's see if you're going to interrupt me. Okay. Uh, first thing, concerning um, your, your uh, example of saying Jeremiah was led to the slaughter. I didn't bring to you to a verse that says he was led to the slaughter. I brought to you to a verse which says he was... Verse four, it says he was bruised. He was chastised. He was an offering for a sin offering, which makes it clear that he had to be killed because a sin offering must be killed. That That's all throughout the Old Testament. And I brought you the part where it says he will be put in the grave. So now you're going to the seed part. I'll give you an example where it says uh, uh, the seed of Eve would be the one who crushed the head of, of, uh, of the, ser the serpent. So, so now I'm basically the physical example. offspring of uh, Eve. So you, okay, you so literally, if you believe, if you believe that, my point, 
uh, if you if you believe that when it says the seed, okay, me I have no problem. I, I will give you the I will give you the the the, the benefit of, benefit of the doubt because I didn't come to argue the seed as uh, 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 um, um, whether it's always being used for uh, human beings when, when it's is always it always means offspring. Let's let's say. I give you the benefit of the doubt for that. No, it does mean that there's no need okay, for no the benefit I give it to you. of the doubt. I give it to you. Even your Eve example that? proves that. Uh, I'm sorry. Even your example using Eve proves that no it's problem. obviously um, Eve's physical offspring that's going to cross the head of the devil. But, Don't you but, believe that? No, no. But I, I agree. I, I'll agree with you. But here's okay, the so you gave an example that um, goes Here. against you. Let, let, let's okay. see, let's say if you're going to interrupt me for five seconds. Um, my point is when it says he will see seed. You're saying it's his seed. You're you're adding the pronoun his for what reason to support your position? Okay, can, can you read it from the King James? No, no, Terry, 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 no, 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 Terry. I'm going to the Hebrew. Yeah, but the Terry. Hebrews implied. Is Terry, that we're not going to make point. Terry, According to what? Terry, you're adding it's in parentheses. Point. It's in parentheses. Listen, that means Terry, 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 Terry yeah, um, just one second, Zaki, Zaki, let me just say something to Terry. Terry, we're not going to make a point, and then you forget that point was made, and you just bring it up again. All right, so um, we're not going to allow that. All right, so this his seed. So first of all, seed. Um, you, you're going to concede. Fair enough. Now you're saying his has been added, and and you 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 then said this is what you said. Uh, I don't know why you're doing that. Don't know why you're doing that. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Yes. The reason why because. That's implied throughout the Old Testament. It doesn't have to say his seed to, to mean that. Now, Zaki explained that. So I'm not quite sure why you seem to ignore that. Give me an example. It. Give me All an right. example. Zaki, repeat Give what you said to Zaki, him. Uh, give me an example. Give me an example where, where your, the his is implied. Give me another example because you want to put me to the test for, for a point that I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing the seed point. But you want to make that argument? Give me another example where his is not uh, uh, is implied okay. in another verse and it's not oh, there. And okay, uh, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Zakir, Zakir. Yeah, you I'm, trying to, your, your friends, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. You're trying to get to the bottom of this. Tell me, let Zakir. me re reply now. Be before, before I go, you made a statement. You're okay. telling people this is what it is. I know it's not true. So now I'm putting okay. you on the hot seat. Show okay. me another example. Okay, just answer this question, yeah. You see, you're not. You're see not so, so say you're wrong. Say you're wrong. Okay. I was Wait, wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to answer your question, but you have to work with me a little bit. Okay, go ahead. When it says he shall see, see, okay. When it says he shall see seed, whose seed is it speaking about? No, uh, that's not my point. I want no, you no, to you have to answer. Is somebody seed. seed? Is it his seed or is it somebody else's seed? Who he seed? will see seed. Okay, seed what does seed. that mean? What does that phrase that mean? Means, that means uh, uh, to me, what Stop. it means is he's gonna see. His uh, uh, as he said, he's the seed. Also, he's gonna see his uh, his um, his reward or his people, uh, 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 his children. Uh, well, you just changed the word seed. Children. And you do you know he, had, he added the word his into it himself because he knows it applies to the servant? So obviously, his seed is the correct translation, which is why nearly every English translation has his. So you just added the word his yourself. His. his reward or his seed. You added the pronoun. His, no, no, did you not I'm just now? Zakir, what I'm arguing is not a physical seed. You're saying it's a physical seed every no, time. No, 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 no. Let me finish my sentence. Let me finish my sentence. My sentence. You're saying it every time. It, uh, every time it pertains to a physical being, a person, it is offspring. I'm saying it doesn't. No, no, no. That you, you conceded that point. I, I agree with that point, but I'm saying it doesn't have the right, 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 right. So here's so the problem. Not, Terry, not he's doing it again. Terry, you're doing it again. I'll explain what you're doing again. Right. You've conceded seed means children. Right? You said seed means children. Okay. And then you what just tried to, to make persons. seed... One second, one second. Reward. You Then you just changed it to reward. So how can you concede a point and then change it again? Hamza, and it, let it, me explain to you what... But I have to, I have to say a, stand, a statement... For you to understand what I'm saying, because you're misrepresenting my statement. I said I conceded on one point when it pertains to persons. When it pertains to persons, yes, right. it could be an offspring. But here, right, I'm right, trying right, to. Right. All right, okay, okay. So where'd you get reward from? It doesn't say his. It doesn't have the pronoun reward his. from. No, but no, no. But you said his reward. Where'd you get reward from? I, I gave you an example. Jesus said he's a seed. It doesn't mean he's no, an no, 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 no. 
you, you Zaki asked you a very clear question whose seed is it and you said it's his reward so you added his so you added the pronoun right and then you change seed from offspring to reward so what i'm trying to understand is where have you got reward from and there's a whole yeah. other question on how God can be rewarded, but we'll leave that no, no, no. Hold, for hold some on. other discussion. Because okay. uh, again, we're diverting. I, I, I like the way you just diverted from the issue at hand. No, there's no I said we'll leave that for no another discussion. Mate. There's no diversion, hey, exactly. right? It's very it's, simple what you just did, Terry, and you need to reflect on what you just did. You Tell conceded me. a point and then re re reneged on that position and added another word. And right. he admitted he added the pronoun his and himself added the pronoun to the servant. Uh, I'm going to repeat my, my position, but uh, let me see. Go on, then, go on then. Repeat your position. Okay. Again, I conceded on something I didn't really study, but I will concede that when zera is used, seed is used as it pertains to persons, it means seed. I, right. I, but now your position, what you what what I'm arguing is that the pronoun his. Is not in the verse in question. Oh, whose seed is it? No, it, it, the, the point I'm trying to say. Let's let's because I'm not here to argue the, the the seed question. You brought the seed to try to uh, uh, try to uh, suggest that it's metaphorical. Can if you, you read the King James, James for the wait, wait, Zach, Zach here, Zach here. Let me finish. You're my position. No position now, Terry. We didn't bring here, your position, Terry. You Terry. have to give me an example Terry. where Terry. his is not in a statement, uh, a sense. Terry, and it's, you just reverse the positions. We didn't. Isn't, we didn't say the seed is metaphorical. You're saying it's metaphorical. I'm saying it's metaphorical, but he he's saying said we're trying to prove it's metaphorical. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't mean to. Doubt it. The I'm, I, I'm, metaph the problem, I'm I mean it's metaphorical. I, I mean it's metaphorical. You think it's metaphorical? You're saying it's literal, and I'm saying it cannot apply the literal uh, application of this state, uh, uh, this verse. It, it, it doesn't apply literally but can't because the point it's that not seed pro means no offering. pronoun his. But then no, how okay, can you so see the point? Can you please show us? In the Old Testament, where the word zera is used for a human, and it means anything other than a physical offspring, I'm just I'm, I, I, my argument is it doesn't have it's not about a human, it's it, because of the pronoun his is not there. That's my point. But again, oh, so when it says he should see seed in Greek spermatos, it, it doesn't mean that. Uh, again, you're 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 using a, a, he should the, see offspring, that's what Hebrew? Richard is saying. No, uh, he, yeah, he the Hebrew word zera. Seed. Not his seed. Not his seed. Who's seed? It, it doesn't say his seed. Who's seed? Who's seed? That's for me. I'm not here to argue that. It does my so point you is here? If, <laughs> Terry, I was arguing what you don't understand. You, what, you, what you don't understand is every single really every single English Christian translation has the translation I'm not talking about his English. seed. Because it's implied, it's, it's obviously talking about the servant seed. Uh, the, God's so, not so, Terry, 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 else's offspring. Terry, sorry, mate. Zakir, can I just read the before, before, I go, before I go, can I make one statement? Zakir, yeah. you, made, you made a statement. I conceded. Because when I when I don't know something, I could concede. You made a All statement. Right. that Wait, wait, Zakir, you made a statement saying that it is implied. Give me another example. You said it in front of your people. You don't want diverting Terry, to a seed. It's implied <laughs> because it's clearly the servant seed. Give me an example. Zaki, 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 Zaki. Uh, Terry, you have your Bible in front of you, mate? Have you got your Bible in front of you? Yeah, go ahead. I have it. Uh, read it. Read it. Uh, Isaiah 53? Yeah. Verse 9? Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10 I have the Hebrew Bible, yeah? Yeah, I have the Hebrew in front of me. Uh, yeah, no, yet, read it. No, read, read, read it. Yet it was pleased for the Lord to bruise him. He had put in uh, put him into grief. When that shall make his soul an offering for sin, which implies death, he shall see seed. He no, shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the translation you read. It doesn't say that. I'm sorry. He, he says he will see his seed. No, no, that you're talking about the English translation. I'm going to the Hebrew. I'm sorry. I'm going to what? the Hebrew. Don't don't bring me to what the English. Read Hebrew. Can you read Hebrew? I'm going to Hebrew into linear. Can you read Hebrew? Hebrew into linear. It's All right. I have so, people that know, know how to read it. That uh, Terry, do you not understand? It, it, it's very, very simple. The reason why the Christian translators added the pronoun uh, his into the English is because in context, it's talking about the servant seed. So that's why they write his seed. Obviously, okay. God's not saying to him, I'm going to give you long life and let you see other people's children. 
He's telling you, I'm going to let you see long life and let you see your own seed. That's what the promise is in context. You understand? Can you imagine God saying to Jesus, I'm going to let you have a long life to see Harry, other people's children? Harry, can I just understand something, please? Go ahead. Do you not believe the English translation of the Bible is reliable? Uh, there's a lot of uh, discrepancies with every tra translation. I never said the, the contrary. I'm not a, a King James only list. I'm not a, a person that believe it was written in heaven. No, but I, I the one who translated the Bible pretty much must know what he's translating, isn't it? Must know Hebrew. Um, there's a lot of issues with uh, translations. I could give you many issues with translations, uh, uh, especially the King James Version. But NIV, this, there's many problems. But here's here's my issue. Okay, let's let's say for the benefit of the doubt, what you're saying about Isaiah 53:10 is right. So you're arguing against all the verses four, verses four, verses five, verses nine. That implies death. So no. what happens? Wait, one second. Let me just finish the statement so we know what what we're talking about. Let's go to some. Let's give me another verb, uh, another verse which doesn't have okay, the word. Don't give another verse. Don't give another wait, verse. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait I was Terry. making. Zach, Zach, one second. Terry, Terry, you've done you it again. Straight. No, but you've done what it again. Okay, right, Zach has already explained to you that well, it doesn't mean he'll die because he showed you other places in the Old Testament where it doesn't mean it means near death. And then, uh, so it doesn't mean you actually die. It's just that you're close to coming to die, but survived. And, and he's already explained it. And it's getting really annoying. Give me an example. He, me an example. Done it. he did it. No, no, with the, with the, he, he, he said the uh, being led to the slaughter. I, that's not being no, no, killed. No, 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 no. Give me a. No, 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 no. We're talking about um, where phraseology is used in the Old Testament in this particular verse can be found in other places in the Old Testament. So, for example, lamb to the slaughter. People use that um, as, as saying Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. And the reason Zaki Hussein brought Jeremiah up because he said he was also the lamb to the slaughter. So it, it was just giving an example, right? So g go back to that point again, because Terry, you've got to realize what's being said to you and stop reneging on the position. I'll explain why. So Zaki, explain to him again about the idea that this verse doesn't necessarily mean somebody died. Well, I, I'll give the biggest proof that Isaiah 53 doesn't have to be read in the way Christians read it is the fact that in the first century, from what we know of nearly every Jewish expectation, none of them believed that the Messiah was going to be killed. Now, they all had Isaiah 53 in their Bible. In fact, the New Testament gives proof of this because when Jesus allegedly told his disciples that he's going to die and rise on the third day, what did Peter turn around and say? No, Lord, this cannot happen. Because Peter grew up knowing that, that the Messiah is not supposed to die. And this is, in fact, even proven by Christian scholarship because there's many Christians that apply this to Israel. That did Israel as a nation die literally and resurrect? No. So the metaphorical interpretation of Isaiah 53 is what the Jews believed in the first century. The New Testament itself um, gives um, proof that there was no Jew who believed that the, the um, Messiah is supposed to die. So what does that mean? That they were reading Isaiah 53 metaphorically, not literally. Now, your interpretation flies in the face of the Bible because if you take it literally that the, the servants dying for the sins vicarious atonement, that goes against explicit verses in other parts of the Bible, such as Ezekiel, where God says that he does not punish somebody for other people's sins. So you're basically, in order to make Isaiah 53 about Jesus, you're going against explicit statements of, God's, uh, of God in other places that um, he doesn't accept vicarious atonement. So Isaiah 53 can't be literally talking about the death and resurrection of the Messiah. All right, Terry, I think you've had enough to uh, okay. think about. Uh, you're not paying attention, so I'm going to remove you. That's really insulting. <laughs> so the point here is this. Terry's a, a regular, okay? And I'm so happy to see him in the in, in the back chat because I knew he was perfect guy for Zakir. But did you notice uh, every time Zakir made a point and tried to – he would then renege on the point – and then when you tried to tell me you reneged on the point, you said, oh, you're interrupting me. It was like a tactic, I think. What do you think, Hamza? You're observing that. I think Zakir was brilliant. Absolutely Hamza. awesome. Very stoic. I think, but one thing I would advise, maybe, because I wanted to ask him a question. I wanted to ask him a general question about... I can bring you back if you want. Well, I, I would have said, what motivates your belief in Christianity? Because I think sometimes when you talk about prophecies then he says there is a possibility that it could mean this it means that he already has a conviction whether it's spiritual or psychological or intellectual it doesn't matter he has a conviction 
and he's looking at the evidence, he's pre-framing the evidence. It's like similar in the philosophy of science. It's something called theory-ladenness, that you have the data, but because you already believe in a particular theory, you would read the theory in the data. Similarly, when it comes to Christians like Terry, they're reading their biblical, the, the Christian theology or the Christian Jesus. in the data. So what I would do is exactly follow Zakir's route, route, do what he did, but then straight away and say, say to him, look, what is motivating this Christianity? What is motivating your, 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 your belief in, you know, uh, mainstream biblical Christianity today? And then he could articulate why, and then after you'd be able to unpack that and then show the truth of Islam. And for me, generally speaking, when it comes to Christians, they don't really have an intellectual position, generally speaking. It's more of what you call a spiritual and emotional position. And for example, and that's why we, sh we shouldn't confuse the online loud people with the general masses. The general masses, Christians, that they, they believe they have a loving relationship with the Lord. This is what we need to tap into. Because if they truly understood the nature of the divine and the Islamic tradition, then I truly believe they would all become Muslim. It would be this natural next step. And let me explain why. I, I did this in Canada to someone, you know, just a normal Christian, someone who seems to love God and think that he has a loving relationship with the divine. So what we should try and do, and we should maybe explore this uh, in the Dawa, is instead of always talking about textual integrity and so on and so forth, talk about more existential spiritual matters. For example... They believe that they have a that God is love and they have a loving relationship with the Lord. But the irony is when people when if they were to uncover and unpack the Islamic tradition, they will see far more greater divine mercy and love. And let me give an example. Think about the concept of maximal perfection, because in the monotheistic traditions, we believe in maximal perfect theology, meaning that God's names and attributes are to the highest degree possible. They have no deficiency and flaw. So they believe that God is maximally loving. We believe that too. Allah is Al-Wadud. He is the loving. And we believe his names and attributes, specifically love in this context, is to the highest degree possible with no deficiency, no flaw. But here's the problem. God can't be maximally loving in the biblical tradition. Why? Why? Because he's not maximally forgiving. Because... Uh, love uh, to be maximally loving, you have to be maximally forgiving. They entail each other. Why is God in the biblical tradition not maximally forgiving? Well, think think about it from the beginning, the Adamic conundrum. Yeah, you had Adam alayhi salam falling from grace because of a sin, and God's majesty and holiness is so great that it's affected the relationship between him and his servant. Right. And he can't forgive him directly, directly. He has to basically torture his son, yeah? C contrast this with the Islamic tradition. Adam alayhi salam, it's not called a fall, it's called a slip. It's a slip. And what does Allah say? Allah says, we inspired them with words of, basically words of forgiveness. And Adam alayhi salam and his wife, they say the famous dua, and Allah forgave them. So you could you could have a thought experiment as follows, just to really understand this notion of maximal forgiveness. Imagine I do a sin and I go to a king and I said, I have I have made a mistake in your in your castle. And the, the king says, Okay, what are you gonna do about it? And I'm like, Well, can you forgive me? And the king says, No. I can't forgive you. In order for me to forgive you, I have to torture and kill my son, and you have to accept that I've done that. Yeah? Because remember, it's not just the fact that Jesus died for our sins, so called, it's the fact that we have to accept it as well. Now, the other scenario is I, I make a mistake in the king's palace or the king's castle. And I say to the king, I've made a mistake. And the king says, Okay, what are you going to do? I say, Well, can you forgive me? And the king says, Okay, let me teach you how to ask for forgiveness. And then I do it, and he says, you're forgiven. What is more maximally forgiving? Yeah. It's the second scenario. Now, we don't make analogies with Allah, but by greater reason, 
when we know the Islamic tradition, Allah is maximally forgiving because forgiveness is contingent on the relationship, right? From yeah. that practically. It's not contingent on an outside event that basically uh, it had to happen and it has nothing to do with the servant's heart, the one who has sinned. And also, so therefore God is not maximally loving in the in the Christian tradition. By the way, there's much more to say, but that's just yeah, an yeah, example yeah. of a small little point. The second point is God is not maximally just. You know, even you have so many theories of atonement. The point is, torturing Jesus is not a, a manifestation of maximal justice. So what I would say to a Christian here is, your innate desire to want to connect with God and love God, you know, wouldn't you want to connect with God who is maximally loving and maximally forgiving and one that is maximally just? Because in the Christian tradition, uh, you can't find that maximal justice. Yeah, there's, 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 no, there's no mercy. There's no mercy. The God, God, I, I always say this to Christians. I say your your um, concept of God debases God because you, you, you're saying that he can only forgive sin by accepting this blood sacrifice and whatever it is. So he can't just forgive. He has to take payment. And if he has to take payment, you can't ever forgive. So if you owe me money and I say, oh, Hamza, don't worry, Zaki, I'll take the money from Zaki. Uh, I, I, have, I, have I forgiven anything? I haven't. I've took payment. Whether it's from yeah. you or from Zakir, I've taken the payment. I'm uh, like, you know, the reality. Yeah. Now, and I always also, say this to Christians. Christianity is trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah, Because we know as Muslims from our paradigm that Allah says, if you know, if this creation of mine didn't sin, I would create, wipe them off the face of the earth and replace them with a creation that would sin. So it, it, we're kind of expected to be the weakness of what we are. It's like no one, perfection is not required. Um, and so for me, Christianity is trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. And trying to solve that problem, they have to jump through so many hoops. They have to yes. debate God and his attributes because it's the only way it fits the narrative. They have to make God a man and they have to say God can't forgive. And, it's, it, and there's no justice. Just exactly in, what you yeah. explained. In, in and, summary... And like, Huh? Hamza, yeah, in, in summary, from this perspective, God's forgiveness in the Christian tradition is rooted in suffering. Human sacrifice, mate. Yeah, it's rooted in suffering, but God's forgiveness in the Islamic tradition is rooted in himself, the fact right. that he is the forgiving. And that is, and but if we create that narrative or we do it in a way that, t that invites people to really want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then when we talk about things like you know, what is worship in Islam? What is salah? Worship in Islam means to know Allah, to love Allah, to obey Him, and to direct acts of worship to Him alone directly. Even the term salah comes from the word to connect, which is connecting straight to the divine. So when you add this kind of spiritual, existential, and theological matters into one, I think I think just emotionally it is far more appealing to, to the Christian audience sometimes. Um, so I would use both approaches. But the, but the point you're missing, exactly did, the point you're missing after, is that you've got the golden ticket. Sorry, bro? The point you're missing, and, and, and I, again, I use this quite a lot. The Christian thinks they're sat in an all-you-can-eat buffet and the bill's been paid. And it's very hard to convince somebody, look, you're going to have to pay for this food. Because I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But listen, guys, it's like two in the morning for me now, so right. I have to ask your permission to go. Uh, Thank you for joining, my brother. Yeah, so listen, come. He's tagged in. He's tagged in. If one, <laughs> Zaka, Zaka here for your presence and for uh, sharing time with me. Hamza, Zaka here for the opportunity oh, to be on, on your panel. And now you bless you, Shabir. Sorry, Habibi, I haven't even spoken to oh, you. Yeah. And I bless Not you. Worry, Inshallah, bro, Hamza will do this again. Uh, as for Allah, Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. Look after Allah. Allah, 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 Allah bless you too, brother. Yeah. Zaki, you're stuck here now. Sorry, mate. We we need the Christian. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be gone in about 15 minutes, inshallah. Just, just give it another half an hour, yeah. We'll give it another half. An hour. Uh, I'll try my best. You can do yeah. it. Yeah. We'll try and find the. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother Shabir. Wa alaikum salam, Zaki. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. How are you guys? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. What was what was, yeah, Sheikh Hamza? What was our brother Terry confused about today? Okay, so so he was Sorry trying to, to bring it back. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to go to Isaiah fifty three uh, to uh, justify Jesus being um, crucified. Oh no, his main point was about God deceiving, 
and that uh, wh why would uh, Allah deceive the people of the crucifixion? And uh, Zaki then obviously started unraveling him, saying to him, give us an eyewitness account from the crucifixion. And he tried to go to the Gospel of John. That got unraveled, showing that actually uh, the John's written by someone other than John. Um, then he went to Old Testament prophecy, fell into the trap that was baited for him. <laughs> and... Um, and Zaki just dealt with it. Oh, he, he could, you know, he's, well, argue, brother, he's arguing semantically. So, for example, um, where he says he shall see his seed. First, he was trying to say seed means something else. Then he conceded because there was nowhere else in the Bible where seed does mean anything else when it comes to human beings. So, therefore, it's a, a offspring. So then he started saying, where does it say his offspring? Now, in the King James Bible, which he reads, it says he shall see his offspring. But he's saying, oh no, I don't trust translations. I have to read the Hebrew and this, that, the other. And he's like, what? Oh, that's that's what happened with Terry. Oh, okay. I think I think I get. The worst thing was that Zakir succinctly, mashallah, underlined every point. Where when it said um, where it looked like he said he died, he showed him that metaphorically it just means close to death, but survive. Oh, yes. Um, uh -huh. and, and then what happens is Terry forgets that. And he, he brings up the same point again later on. You get me? And I have to keep talking. <laughs> yeah. I've already dealt with that. Um, so you can see Zach, uh, he knows about Terry. Uh, he's a nice yes, guy, he really is a nice Alhamdulillah. guy. Alhamdulillah, that's another page that Brother Zakir has cleared for him. Inshallah, oh, he'll come closer. That's it. that's it, and then Hamza yeah. gives some beautiful wisdom, not to him though, because um, he, 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 yeah, he's I not, understand. Like, on the stream, and he's like going like this, and someone's explaining something. And I yeah. don't know what's going to happen, right? He was explaining something to him, Zach, yeah? And he's talking away. He's, he's looking at his missus or whatever he's doing. Yeah, he's going to yeah. come back and hear anything you said, and he's going to repeat <laughs> that point that you've just refuted. And it's just a waste of time. Uh, I agree. Okay. All right. Uh, creative ninja. Hello, guys. Yes. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. So, um, I'm from Kenya, Africa. Big fan of Hamza. So, okay. thanks for this. For, uh, Are you Muslim? No, I'm not a Muslim, but oh. I have a. I I was born in a Muslim family, um, but along the way, because of um, my experience with uh, Muslims, but that's just a subjective uh, reasoning. Because of my um, experience with Muslims, I left Islam. I, like I left Islam along the way, but um, I became an agnostic. I didn't want to care about what God says or if God exists. But of, uh, of late, I've tried to to reason it out, and now I am in the position of where I am. Uh, I'm a theist. I believe in God, but the version or the version of the God that I believe in is different. Okay, it's different from what maybe Islam or Christianity might be believing in. So I will not consider myself being a Muslim because I didn't really study Islam really well, uh, and I can't say that I. That I know anything about what Muhammad, Muhammad is be upon him taught, or what God, um, uh, how how Islam perceive perceives God. So where I am, um, I have this belief that um, there's a God or there's an initiator. Let me call that an initiator, and this initiator could is just like a source for us. All right, and then. We we are just we're just moving on. Life is just moving on. It started and then life is just moving on. I don't necessarily believe that he wants anything from us, but um, or I don't really believe the nature of this God uh, is someone who is looking into us. I think life is just moving um, random. Let me say that. So that's my belief. One and then. Um, I've been trying to look for answers, and I can say Christianity for me it couldn't work because it has so many problems. I've been watching your streams, and honestly, I didn't want to bother look at that front. So I've been looking into Islam again afresh, and um, I don't know if this is the right stream, but I, I have a few questions um, that I would like clarity on. Okay, start. And, let's start with one. Um, okay. Go on. Okay. Um, oh, can I give my questions? One, yeah, give us your first question. Okay. So my first question is, um, in the, in, uh, I feel like Islam 
um, says we should worship God. And that is the main motive of Islam. But I, I think uh, where life is right now, we have moved, we have advanced so much ahead in life in such a way that um, it feels like people going into religion hinders the progress of human, uh, progression in human civilization. For example, if I was a person who believed and did nothing, let's say I did nothing in, in, in my, with my life, let's say I just lived, Worship, worship God, pray, did salah, um, I did my fasting, but never did anything else. I never um, contributed in the progression of this world. Let me say maybe um, technology advances or medicine advances or anything. If I could just stay and worship God, I I believe, uh, okay, how I perceive uh, Islam or religion. No, 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 please, 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 get to the point, okay. please. Okay, Does what I'm point? saying Okay, okay, sorry. What I'm saying is religion hinders the progression of human civilization. That's what I'm saying. As a Muslim or as a person who believes in God, if you just believe in God and don't do anything else, you are, as in God, won't All punish right. you. So, so, so what you're saying is, if you're Muslim, then we wouldn't advance in civilization, is that what you're saying? Yeah, if you're Muslim and you just be, if you just live your life believing in God. Okay. And what if you're yeah. a Christian and you just did the same? What, what was the difference? I don't get it. Um, you're an atheist and you just did the same. Okay. I, I, I don't understand your point. Oh, what I'm saying is we, we are relying too much on religion and there's so much going on in this world. So I don't believe that we are meant to worship a God. Okay, I don't believe that we are meant to worship a God because there's so much, there's so much everything going on. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. you're talking gibberish, mate. Yeah, okay. You're what, talking what gibberish. I'm saying, Okay, sorry. What I'm saying. Yeah, is, you, 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 I, you know, I, I go as far as say you're talking nonsense. Okay. It doesn't make any forgive, sense what you're saying. Okay, forgive my English. What I'm trying to say. Let me. It's not about your English. It's about what you're saying. Uh, okay, why? Because um, you okay. you're saying that if you were a Muslim, no, 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 and you no didn't just, do any, didn't do any science or nothing like that, then there'd be no technology. No, no, no. That's through what I'm saying. Sorry, Hamza, you're not getting my question. Yeah, what yeah. I'm saying, what I'm saying is. If you just stay as a person and don't do anything else in this world, don't do, don't participate in anything in this world, but just worship God, did Salah, did Ramadan. Who, who then, says? Who says that? Yeah, yeah. No, Islam has it, everything in moderation. No, no, no. It doesn't expect you to be well, like no, a monk hiding it. out. You, you're having to go Buddhism here, I believe. Right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Brother, I'm not, brother Hamza. Should we, should we go on? Sorry, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Creative Ninja. My brother, what is yeah. your name? Uh, my name is Hashim. Hashim? Yes. Uh, you, uh, uh, oh, you, and you are from Kenya, did you say? Yes, I'm from Kenya. You are from Kenya. I'm from Malawi. Yeah. So you are my neighbor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> excellent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> nice meeting you. You see, you yeah. see, brother, there are certain things you have said which clearly are based on your very limited understanding of life okay. in general, let alone let alone Islam or Christianity. Uh, okay. How old are you, brother? I am twenty-five. You are twenty-five. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. You are just setting out on the journey of life as yet. Okay. You okay. see, you see, brother, uh, Islam, uh, the way you mm. see it, is actually non-existent. Okay. Okay. Yes. Islam. Islam does not only tell us about what you just said. You see, on a personal level, I can worship okay. my creator. Using the word worship, we must understand it is not the way you have so restrictively put it. Okay? okay. The word worship yeah. encompasses quite a lot of things. And in Islam, we will say this much, or I will say this much, that Islam is a complete comprehensive system. Okay? So okay. if we were to if we were to start at level one and go upward, I will tell you this: on level one, we have the explicit acceptance of. If you don't understand anything, please do ask me. Okay. Okay. We have an explicit acceptance of a being who created everything. Now, okay. our yeah. Step two: we acknowledge the fact that the creator created everything. Step three, we acknowledge the fact that the creator has gifted us with life and everything that is around us. 
Okay. The, cre the creator has also given us this intellectual ability to be able to decipher things, to understand things. Okay? Okay. So far, okay. so good? So far, so good. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Now, yeah. Uh, putting all, all that together, we also find that we have this incredible ability which the creator has provided to us to actually search out things. We ask many questions. We will ask, who are we? Why are we here? What is the universe about? Okay. Now, uh, now uh, you will find it, uh, uh, from my perspective anyway, it is an incredible uh, thing that you will know today that the Quran actually encourages us to seek answers. And, uh, and questions to what? About the universe about the natural world, the way we define the natural world. It even goes so far as to actually ask the question, look at the birds flying. How do they do that? Now, they are uh, if, just using that example of the birds, uh, my brother. Yeah? yeah, you find the creator has pointed this out in the Quran. And you have to ask yourself, why has he mentioned this? Now, you will find the engineering of flight today. Uh, you know, have you ever flown in an aircraft? Yes, I have. You have, okay? Yeah. If I were to ask you now, between a, a, a wing of an aircraft and a bird, the feathers of a bird or a wing of a bird, which one is more advanced? The, the one for a bird. The one for the bird? Yeah. Now, the creator is telling us, look at how a bird is flying. Now, how would we be able to do that apart from just, you know, superficially seeing a, a, a bird fly by? Can we not investigate? Can we not yeah. investigate how this bird is flying? Yeah. Exactly. Now, I'm just using this uh, small example. There are so many hundreds of verses in the Quran which actually are telling us to study uh, subject matter, which today we would call astrophysics, physics, biology, chemistry. All these you are familiar with? Yeah, I am familiar with that. You are familiar uh, with them? Well, these are all mentioned in the Quran in one way or another. And I, I would suggest to you that what you okay. need to do now, brother, is take an extra step and actually try and establish what Islam actually says as opposed to what you actually think yeah, yeah. it should say. You seem to be responding to a caricature. You seem yes. to have created this idea. I mean, look, just give you an example. I don't know if you're aware of this, Hashim, that yeah. uh, the, uh, the founders of the scientific method were Muslims. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, 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 yeah I know that. I know that. Right. Uh, so the idea, and you know, and if you look at if you look in history, and you look at places like the Beit al Hikmah and all of these places yeah. where the the Muslims would would I mean, for example, if you wanted to get the oldest copies of you know, I think is it Aristotle and all that, you need to go to the Arabic, I believe, if I'm not wrong. The the fact yeah. that it was the, it was the Arabs who yes. translated their works. So the idea that you yeah. think or come have this concept that by being religious means you you shut the shop on the world. You stop learning, you stop studying, you stop researching, you stop reflecting, and you just sit in your yeah. house and pray. I'm saying to you, your yeah. caricature is that of a Buddhist monk. Yeah? That's what your caricature okay. is. Because that's what they do. So the Buddhist monk prays in the temple all day. The villagers grow food to take to feed them. Yeah? They, they do okay. the praying. They do the, 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 the work in agriculture and such. Yeah? So yeah. it's not Islam. So the idea okay. that you think you can come on here and not respect and yeah. paint this caricature and then try to bring it down, um, you, you've got the oh. wrong end of the stick. Now, whether you're serious, sincere or not, you know, something... No, I'm sorry. I, I was not trying to bring Islam down. I, no, I no, no, I know, I know. But uh, yeah. the point here is this, and this happens many, uh -huh. many times. And this is not just for you now, though. This is for everybody watching as well. Whenever anybody comes with something against Islam, First thing you have to see, what is this Islam that they have in their mind? Is this the Islam that you recognize? Because a lot of times they'll come with all these things and you think, wait, I don't, I don't recognize this religion, mate. So the way you came across, you were painting Buddhism, like I said, and I don't, re I, you know, and Shabir straight away. What are you talking about? Okay. This isn't us. We're, 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 the, we're the practical ones. 
Yeah, yeah we're, we're the ones you. that we're the ones that on on Friday we close our businesses and go pray Juma, then we go back to work. You know, we're the practical ones. We're, we're not. This is not like an abstract religion. You, no, you get. Can I? And we're told, mashallah, that yeah. you know, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. We're Absolutely. always seeking new knowledge in every field. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Can, can Can I just, uh, brother? Yeah. yeah, you see, brother. Uh, uh, thank you, Zakala. You see, uh, brother. I I do apologize. I forgot on your name. Yeah, my name is Hashim. Hashim. You yeah. see, you see, Hashim. The other thing that I can, if I can quickly mention uh, to you, you have got uh, a, a, an idea of what the creator ought to be, rather than what the creator is. There's a, there's a slight distinction. You see, I can sit here, and I want you to tell me, I'm just giving you an example. If I were to sit here and think uh, of uh, God to be Pele, some people do. You know the footballer Pele? Yeah. 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 If I were to sit here and say, he is my God, okay? You yeah. come across, you come and tell me that, you know, the late uh, President Banda of Malawi, he was God. Somebody else comes with his version of God. Everybody carries their own version of God. Does that make God what God is? No. Why not? Because that's their own subjective understanding of God. E excellent. God. So if, if I required an objective understanding of the creator, how would I do it? Um, research, uh, look at everything first and then... Um, but for, for but for me to research for me to sorry Hashim for me to research uh, yeah. and look at everything will still give me the bottom line a subjective assessment. Uh, maybe test it uh, um, or reason it out. But uh, right for me to reason out for me to test out I would need to first and foremost necessarily know if this being that we are talking about is superior to me. And looking at everything around me, logic is telling me that this being will be superior to me. Correct? Yeah. Well, Correct. if that is the case, then it is only logical that that particular being has to inform us of what that being is. Do you agree with that? I totally agree with that. Now, if that be the case, don't you think that wherever the claim is being made about a message from this being, you should be investigating that? I believe you should. Then I would kindly urge you, Hashim, to take up the Quran, take up also what the Quran is actually saying about where it is from. Uh, and I would humbly submit to you, Brother Hashim, that the, the, the creator and the way the creator has informed us of what the creator is in the Quran, in totality, you cannot get it from any other scripture. And I say this with humility. OK, and I would okay. kindly I would kindly urge you to actually take up the Quran, read it. Uh, I will. Our brother Hamza will give you an email address. By all okay. means, if you have got any other questions after you have actually studied this, by all okay. means, come back to us. And I can confidently tell you now, my brother Hashem, that once yeah. you have done that, you will submit to the creator and embrace Islam. Sure. And I would okay. also uh, and I would also say one final thing. You did mention at the start that you looked at Muslims and as a result, for some reason, yeah, you may yeah. have left Islam. Yeah, if uh, I, I yeah, I would I would suggest to you that, look, where Islam is present, I would urge you to go and look at that. Don't look at the okay. Muslims. I am not condemning Muslims. Yeah. All I'm saying to you is look at what Islam actually says and then come back to us, God willing. All right, Hashim. Okay. Do you want to that? Hamza, Brother okay. Hamza, I'm just going to knock off for 10 minutes. Uh, I'm just attending to mom, okay? Yeah, okay. You're not probably sure. Okay, salam alaikum. Right, salam. Is there any Christians in the back chat? Let me just see. I, I'd just like to okay. add, it's like judging a car by the driver. If the driver is not driving properly, you say, oh, the Ferrari is no good. That's the same thing. If you're going to look at the Muslims and judge Islam and that, then um, it's like um, unfair. So okay. don't look at the Muslims, because if, if you do want to look at the Muslims, then when we were practicing our religion properly, we had the golden age. The Muslims were dominant okay. in science, art, culture, everything. When we stopped following our religion properly, we stagnated and we got left behind. 
So um, Islam encourages us to do the best we can in this world as well as in moderation. You have your spirituality, but we're also in this physical world as well. So it's not that we just go in a monastery and sit down like a Buddhist monk. Yeah. We have to uh, do justice to <laughs> our families, our jobs, um, the world around us, and obviously our obligations towards our creator. Okay, so um, uh, 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 thanks for that. Um, uh, okay. I think I, I have understood um, where Islam is coming from. Um, I will go read more about it. I can't say I know more most about it, so I won't judge this far. But I have just one more question, just one more clarification. Does it mean that since Prophet Muhammad, um, peace be upon him, God does not reveal anymore? Um, Okay, according to my own understanding, this is my understanding again, um, or my subjective reasoning, I believe God still continues to talk with people and um, not through prophets now for the whole for the whole generation, but through specific people or through your heart maybe alone. Um, does God still continue to speak to people according to Islam? Um, and if that's so, is Islam the only truth um, about God? And... From there on, um, we just have to question or uh, reason out with the Quran alone. Well, the, the second part of your question, yes, Islam is the only truth. Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm asking, is oh, it's the only truth. Okay, that answers my question. Does God continue to reveal or talk to uh, people? We believe Allah can give hidayah. Allah can, Allah can open the heart to understanding and uh, to the faith and put the faith in your heart. So yeah, we have okay. no issue with that. But with regard to speaking, yeah. um, Allah speaks to us through the Quran and the Quran. And the Quran is timeless. And the Quran, no matter, no matter how the world changes, the Quran still um, stays relevant to our situations. Yeah. So through through the Quran, Allah Azawajal is still always engaging us. And it's not no just how much the world advances. Yeah, it's not. It's not even okay. just that. Allah, Allah yeah. speaks to us through the Quran, and we yeah. still have the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speak to us through the Hadith. So alhamdulillah, okay. uh, we, we, we have the words of the final messenger, alhamdulillah, and we have the, the words of Allah. And you don't need nothing else. That's okay. it. That's no, no, other religion, no other religion yeah. can bring that standard. Okay, I, honestly, I, I, I don't think right. that... Take care, dude. I want to look. Yeah, thanks. Lala. Logical thinking, are you no money? <laughs> Everybody... Is this, is this no money, yeah? Something from the Rambam, the Mishnah ah, Torah. Okay, here, speak to your mic a bit. Moses Ben Maman, commonly known as Maimonides, so, or by the acronym sound up. Rambam. Put your sound one of the up. Most influential Torah scholars of the Middle Ages, and the Mishnah Torah is known as the Code of Law or Halakha, compiled from the Talmud. And I just want to speak briefly or read. I was uh, in studying Yesodi HaTorah chapter 1. And Bro, can I just stop you a second? Time. Bro, can I just stop you a second? What, what, what's the point you're making? Yeah, that's what I thought. It's like, it's like he was flipping, just playing a tape. <laughs> I missed most of it because for some reason I, I left the room. I came back and he was speaking about the Mishnah Torah. Uh, I'm trying to say, turn your mic up, and he's just talking, 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 talking. <laughs> I, I, I take it was Orthodox Jew. I don't know what he was. There was some guy yesterday on one of the streams going on about the Old Testament and this, that, the other, and I'm wrong about Judaism. Because I was talking about how the oldest manuscripts is like 3,000 years later, and the, the, the oral tradition was uh, translated because they couldn't have it from riddles because they couldn't write the oral tradition down. And, and that came 2,000 years later, and, and something like that. So he was in the comment section saying, oh, let me on, this, that, the other. And I said, look, come to the arena tomorrow. Zakir is here, mashallah. Deal with it, you know what I mean? But um, I, I, it's like someone said here, I think he was playing a tape. I don't think it was him. <laughs> oh, my life. Do you get me? So playing as soon as you stop him and say, what's your point? <laughs> he's, he's stuck now, isn't he? <laughs> oh. that, that's the thing about online. I don't think anybody in Speaker's Corner will come to you and play a tape to your face. <laughs> oh, listen, yeah, listen to this guy. Alex. Hey, you're right. All right, mate. Uh, I just had a quick one. I was watching a, a YouTube video on an argument for Christianity, actually, but I think it could apply 
to Muslims as well. And I just wondered what your thoughts were on it. Uh, so it's just uh, it's about free will. Uh, so it says free will is the power of acting without constraint or of necessity or fate. If God exists, he, he knows all knowledge. If he knows all knowledge, then he knows what you're going to do before you do it. So if he knows what you're going to do before you do it, you were fated to do it. You had to do it. No. No? No. I, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I hear this all the time and I just don't right. get it. I, I, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Say you had a time machine, right? And you, and you went forward in time 10 years. Yeah. Right. And, and, you, and you witnessed somebody do something. Did you make them do that thing or did you just witness them doing that thing? That's not the same thing. It, it is the same thing. I'll explain why. Okay. God knows what you're going to do before you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Did God tell you, did God make you do that thing or did you just know you were going to do that thing? But what if we're saying free will is the power to do something other than, you, you know, no, without no, whatever you choose to, to do. See, here's the thing yeah. you see, and this is the paradigm you've got to put yourself in. We say Allah is all knowing, yeah? What does that mean? <clears throat> it means he knows everything. He knows everything, knows the future. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So whatever you choose, Allah knows what you chose. Yeah, but you couldn't choose not to do it. Let's whatever say there's you a. Chose, you chose first, though. Let, let's say there's an option A or B. He knows you're going to pick B. Right. Before, before, uh, who you, B? Who before B? you pick B. Pardon? No, but who picked B? You. Right. So who had the free will to choose B? Could you have chosen A? You, no, you couldn't. Why couldn't you chose A? Because God knows you will choose B. No, you could have chose A, couldn't you? No, because God knows you will choose B. No. And, if you and chose, no, 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 no. Well, then he had to choose A. God knows either he doesn't me. know that he either he doesn't know that you're gonna pick B or he, he does. What are you gonna do? Okay, Alex, uh, I think we should go back to Hamza's example because I was gonna give this exact same example. Now imagine I went ten years into the future and I witnessed that um, you did a certain act, and then I come back to our time now because I know you're gonna do you're gonna choose B in ten years time. Does that mean your free will is gone now? You didn't choose B. You could have chose A, but you couldn't choose A because I already know you're going to choose B. It has no bearing on what you choose to do yourself just because somebody knows it. So re look at it from the other way. So if you go if you go forward 10 years into the future and you see that I picked B and you go back in time, you know that I'm going to pick B. I could never have chose A because the outcome is that I picked B. I could have chosen A. But you didn't. No. Yeah, just one second, Alex. I don't think you're checking. Hamza, I'm going to have to leave the next uh, about two, three minutes, inshallah. All right. But I'm going to grab it anyway. It's, it's, um... I'm, not, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not explaining it very well. Uh, Alex, really I, I don't you. understand what you're saying. Knowing the outcome of something doesn't mean you determine the outcome, does it? Does it mean that you determined it? No. No. You, no so, for example, for, for example, if, if man no, that United, doesn't mean it wasn't determined. No, no, listen, listen, listen. If next year, let, let's use the time example, like the time travel thing. So, so next year, right, uh, I go in the future and I see Man United win the Premier League. Yeah? Yeah. And and, and I come back now. That means Man United are going to win the Premier League because that's already happened. Yeah. I've seen it happen. Nothing else so is going to happen, yeah? So could they choose not to win the Premier League? It's not about choosing, is it? They've already done it. <laughs> well, they haven't already done it if it's in the future. They, they, well, they have already done it if it's in the future. So they wouldn't be in the future if they hadn't done it. So, so are you saying the future's already happened? I, I'm, I'm oh, not yeah. Allahu Akbar. Akbar, yes. As far as Allah is concerned, the future's happened, yes. So everything you're going to do in your life, Alex, when you become Muslim, Allah knows when you're going to become Muslim. And if you don't become Muslim, Allah knows you wasn't so, going to become Muslim. Okay, uh, so does that, that mean... Does that mean I'm destined, or they were destined or fated to win? Just one second, Alex, before you carry on on that, isn't it? Hamza, I'll, just do me a favour and I give uh, Brother Shabir my salam on that as well. Okay, inshallah. And, and inshallah, I'll have a longer stream with him down the road. So inshallah. I'll have to leave for now. Assalamu well, alaikum. And then there was me and you. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. So knowing something's going to happen, doesn't mean you've determined that to happen. It's just knowing it's going to happen. Okay, so I think this is where the problem is. I'm not saying God caused it to happen. 
I'm saying that he knows what what was going to happen. So you yeah, can't. What, how does he know what's going to happen? Well, I don't know. I'm not God. No, no. How would you know something's going to happen? How do you know someone chose B? Well, what before they chose it? How would you know someone chose B? I'm not. I'm not following what you mean. That's the problem. So you have got to understand the the concept of all knowledgeable. So how would you know if someone chose B? It means you've seen them choose B, innit? Right. Right. So, Did, so seeing someone choose something doesn't mean you determine them to make that choice. They could have chose A. They chose B. You knew they're still, chose... still using that same language. I'm saying that you know what's going to happen. So that means it's got, it's got to happen. It has to happen that way. It can't not happen that way. It happens that way because it's happened that way. Right. That's it. But you couldn't you couldn't have not done that. You could have chosen B or A. It's up to you. Whatever you did, choose A, choose B. Allah, whatever you chose, Allah knew what you were going to choose. He didn't determine your choice. I'm not saying he does. Then that's it. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I've never understood this position, I'll be honest with you. I think it's a moot point, to be honest. So... Uh, I don't, what, I don't think, does, what, what do you think it means? I don't understand. What does it mean? It means that I don't think that there's free will. I don't, well, I, you don't think it's free will? So you don't I think don't. you're supposed to come on this stream today, no? No. Did you have to come on the stream today? What, what do you mean by do I have to come on the stream? Did you have like, to come on to the stream today? Did, no. You didn't? Why did you come on? Uh, whatever brain state or chemical or, or you chose wind to come temperature on. or whatever. You made the choice to come on. There, there is no driver behind the car. Did you have to come you know, on? Like, Did you have to come on? Did I have to come on? Yeah. Uh, it depends. It depends on what frame of reference you're talking about. Did you have to come no. on? Was it necessary for you to come on? Yes. Why? Because that's what happened. You chose it to happen. You didn't have to come on. But I did so, come for on. Example, I could choose to do this. Yeah? Yeah. All this. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. I, I, I can add or remove you at will. Would you agree? Yeah. Right. So. But whichever one. So whatever I choose, who's in, who's in the, whose choice is it? My choice? Well, it's whatever circumstances led to you doing that. Is it my choice? choice? What? So whatever circumstances led you to choice? do that. Forget why I did it. Is it my choice? It depends what you mean. Oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> Salam alaikum, Shabir. You're back, bro. Salam alaikum, Salam oh, I, I, I apologize about that. Explain for the basic thing. Is it my choice? What do you mean? Ah, <sighs> right. Uh, we're not going to go for much longer. Um, no problem. No problem, Inshallah. Yeah. No problem. Um, uh, was it, sorry, brother Hamza. What, what was, uh, if you don't mind, what was the brother? Right. I just caught the last. Uh, right. So you can answer it now. Now, no problem. Um, basically, he, you know, this idea that because Allah knows what you're going to do, um, then you have no choice in that thing. In the idea that um, there's no free will. Uh huh. And, and um, when it's explained to him that it's not determined for you, he says, I'm not saying that. So then it's a case of, well, what are you saying then? But Allah knows your choice. And then he said, yeah, but the chemical in your brain's led to that. And, and it's like, <laughs> because his point was answered. So then he tried yes. to move the whole post yeah. to create this kind of new scenario. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not determined. Right. So what is yeah. it? <laughs> You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's an argument. There is an argument that everything you do in your life is determined by the seconds preceding it. Yeah. So whatever yes. you eat for your dinner is not your choice. It's, it's just a chain reaction. But mm. the problem you have that then child rapist, then is not their fault. It's just that's just a chain reaction. You can't punish prisoners because it's not criminals. It's not their fault. Mm. Yeah. They've got no free we, are, we are back to just uh, an arrangement of atoms, are we? <laughs> that's it. That's it. Something, something <laughs> along those lines. No, no, I, I think, you know, you know what, brother, the majority of the uh, people who actually ask about this issue uh, don't actually have a grounding in how to actually logically take something to its conclusion. And what usually happens is confusion reigns. Uh, it's easy to use the word free will 
It is easy to use, use the word determinism, compatibility. There are so many, a plethora of words. But what we have to understand, I mean, somebody had asked me, uh, you, you know, on a simplistic level, yeah, uh, I, uh, he, he says, uh, oh, uh, there is no free will, yeah, uh, just uh, similar to what he was saying. So I said to him, look, uh, let's, let's just do an experiment. <laughs> so we were in a room. So I asked him to give me a tennis ball, yeah, took the tennis ball from him. I said, right, I'm taking this tennis ball and I'm telling you now, I'm sending it into that corner of the room, okay? Why? And now, if that ball having a limited uh, aspect, if it was given the ability to think, would it know it is going to end up at the corner of the wall? The answer would be no. But the problem is that me and him stood there, saw the ball rolling going a particular way. Yeah? Now, I, I was uh, simplifying it for him that, look, there are many aspects which you need to fully understand first before you even try and address a question like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, one particular uh, young man uh, wanted to leave Islam because of this particular question. So I, I said to him, again, uh, looking at the age of the individual, like he was only 18. Yeah. So I said to him, I said, look, can I ask you basically a sort of logical approach? I said to him, if you were accused of uh, murder and you came across a judge who only knew 50% of the facts and you had another judge who knew all the facts, which one would you prefer to come before? Now, no one is going to say, I will prefer the one who has only 50%. Yeah. I said, first, understand what we mean. That when we say that the creator is the all-powerful, you must try and first understand what you are thinking about before you go on forward and understand what the creator is. But that information, just like we are telling the brother Hashim, you have to first and foremost establish what the creator is from the creator's perspective before you start asking questions like that. SubhanAllah. Honestly. Yeah. I agree. And then this was the this point. Is. You've got to work in our paradigm. And, yes. And knowing the outcome of something doesn't mean you determine the outcome. And then he said, oh, yeah, I'm not saying it's determined. That, well, then what are you saying? <laughs> I don't get it. You have no... Yeah. Well, of course you do. Because like, I, I made it easy for him yesterday. I said, look... Yeah, I can, absolutely. I just kick you off or not. My choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let me and, and, and you kicked him off. Yeah. yeah. Did he have a choice in coming back? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Oh, God. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Right. Oh, excellent, I tell you. Carlos. Carlos. Yeah, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I yeah, I think you're a troll, mate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I looked it. Hello. Yes, good day. Can you hear me? Uh, can we hear you? No. Turn your sound up a bit. Uh, I do apologize. I'm on my iPad. Um, I you still, still can't hear you, mate. You're it's very low, your voice. Uh, how about now? No, let me see if I can adjust your, your voice. How about now? Test it. Uh, go on. Um, I don't know if you can hear me or not. I tried can hear you now. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I can hear you guys. Um, I was just wondering, you know, if I can help with some clarity on your last um, caller. Um, he was talking about, I believe, open theism is the the will of God set in stone. Meaning, does God determine the future, or does He allow it to change? If you get what I'm saying, because there is an example within the the Hebrew scriptures of where King David um, was inquiring of the Lord, right, whether or not he, if he goes to a certain city, then would he be captured? And then, you know, God said, if you go, you're going to be captured. If you don't go, you're not going to be captured, right? So he was sort of implying that you know God is both open. And set in stone at the same time. 
So you come on to tell us? Have you, have you, come, have you, have you, come, have you come to the point? Well, the, the point was, um, you know, he was asking you or, or your panel, you know, if in Islam is Allah's uh, will or his knowledge set in stone or, or does it change? Okay. It, it, if Allah knows your, your life from beginning to end, you know, every decision you've made. So, for example, Allah tells us um, if you make effort you can raise and lower your risk your your sustenance yeah if you make dua yeah you can raise and lower your you can raise your sustenance and then allah knows if you're going to do that or not because allah knows you from cradles to grave and you know every this is how he knows exactly how much money you're going to earn how many wives you're going to have how many children you're going to have all of these things so uh, that that's our paradigm that whatever choice you make, whatever do you make, whatever differences are made, it's already set in stone due to the fact of the choices you've made. Sure. So if you choose to raise your hands and ask Allah, Allah, um, give me bounty, do this for me, or when you go to a market, rather than putting stuff in a box on the table, you, you display everything nicely. Allah knows you're going to do that. Do you, do you get me? And so, um, mm -hmm. you know, Allah's given wisdom and Allah's given to us use effort. So we know the risk can be raised and lowered. But then that, that's still known as well, whether you did that or not. So I always say this, um, you can't change um, what's written, but you can affect what got wrote. That's why. That's how I would uh, say it. Anyway, what's your point? Anyway, you're a Christian, man. You come on here and you're challenging the atheist. Why don't we, well, I want to get my feet into a Christian. Your name, your name suggests you've got a point no, to make. I challenging him. I was Huh? No, 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 I wasn't challenging anyone. I was trying to see if I was um, to help to clarify what his stance was, because he was trying to suggest whether or not God, within his infinite knowledge, changes his knowledge or is his knowledge set in stone? That's the main point I was trying to make. No, his knowledge is set in stone. Say it again. The knowledge is set in stone, isn't it? So the knowledge is set in stone. So you can't basically um, try to pray to god to change whatever you do i don't know you were going to do it sure i, I understand what you're saying but so the knowledge is set in stone isn't it whatever whatever you choose to do whatever wriggle you do is known and that's so, when, change. so when prophets try to intercede on behalf of the people and try knew to, that. right so so the, he knew he was going to have prophets come to him to change his will that he already knows is not going to be changed no, that's not that's not okay. Allah knows what he's going to do in that time as well. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not arguing that fact. Yeah. I'm just saying that. But, I don't know what know, fact so, you're arguing then. Sorry, sorry it, uh, brother Hamza. Can ahead, I just, yeah. uh, I, I'm sorry, what is your name, brother? My name is Jesus. It's our Passover lamb. That's not your name. That is my name today. <laughs> <laughs> or do you change it every day? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Jesus is our Passover lamb. You know, uh, can I, I, can I, I just be Why is he being Jesus <laughs> Passover lamb? You see it so wonderfully. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, why is Jesus our Passover lamb? Who, who says that? Because he is. Why do you believe that? Because I do. No, why? Because I do. If you don't believe in a vacuum, do you? Why? Who told you that? I do believe in a vacuum. <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't born believing I'm that. I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking. I'm saying, um, Mr. <laughs> Shikram, what, what were you saying? What, were, what was your response? No, we're more interested uh -huh. in this now. <laughs> well, no, okay, sure. I can, I can give it to you. Um, are you yeah, give it to us. Give it to sure, us. That's fine. Are you familiar with First Temple theology? Uh, you just give it to us, man. You tell us who taught no. you Jesus is our Passover lamb. No, no, no. I'm just asking you a question. What does that mean is our Passover lamb? Say it again. What does it even mean first? Sure. Um, the Passover lamb is in connection with the, the the children of Israel was in Egypt. And when God sent Moses to Pharaoh to free his people, to worship him in the wilderness, to let them go, as one of the, the punishments of Pharaoh not allowing the children of Israel to be let go, um, God destroyed the firstborn. He killed the firstborn of, of Pharaoh's house. So Moses was commanded by God to sacrifice a lamb, a sheep. 
excuse me. Sorry about that. Moses was instru instructed by God to sacrifice a lamb, and what he told the Israelites to do was to put the lamb's blood over the lintel posts of their doors. So when God sent the destroyer, the destroyer would see the blood on the lintel post, and I'm sure you've probably known this before. You're probably well aware of this. So, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, so, so when the angel the angel is sent to destroy uh, the firstborns, and yeah. um, anyone with the, the the blood of this lamb on their door, yes, uh, when the destroyer, this this, yeah. this house belongs to an Israelite. Is that right? Yes, the destroyer would not um, go. Who's the destroyer? The destroyer is Yahweh himself. God. Yes. Whoa. Sorry. Uh, doesn't God know who lives where? Absolutely. So why There's would a... why would God need to see blood on the door? Oh, it's just how the language is used. I'm sure. Why? There are... Yeah, I but have no... I... no, I have no does idea. Make sense to you? No, it, it does make sense. What you're it saying. makes sense to you that an all-knowing God needs no, to know what you're, no, what you're asking. who's who. No, but what you're asking is makes sense is in terms of that. What I'm saying is this: that the story that goes that way is the reason. It makes sense. Why... It makes sense if if you're you're. You believe God is all knowing. I believe I I believe in open theism. I believe that God knows all things, but in in another sense, He doesn't know all things. In what sense doesn't He know? So, okay, can you explain the word all to me? Well, I mean, I mean not all I, things I, and not know all things. I don't get that. No, but the, the point is that the story itself, right? The question you ask and apply to the story. Yes, it does make sense with the question you're asking. But the point is, when the term um, Yahweh is used in the Old Testament, in this case, he sends an angel, but yet this angel is him as well. And so, I the angel, so the angel is God? The angel is God, yes, in, some, in one distinction and another distinction. How is the angel God? If you look at Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, he, he clearly identifies himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, no, no. I'm talking about the destroyer uh, yes. of, the, of the Egyptians' firstborn sons. Yes. What? Do you believe this is God, yes? I believe he's the angel of God and God, yes. And you believe God is all-knowing, yes? Yes, I do. And then you believe God is not all-knowing as well? Correct. How does that make sense? In, in one sense. No, and in any sense. You're assuming that it means in every sense. No, no I'm not what, what does it mean all mean to you? All means everything. Everything. All times, yes. All right. but is it, any sense, exceptions right. to all? It, it's just like when... And any exceptions to all? No, I, I would say, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not a philosopher, no. No, I'm just saying, for example, if you say all of them, are, are you saying except that one or are you saying everyone, everything? No. In terms of the in terms of the story itself, right? Which no, but the story doesn't make no sense. The story would make sense if it was an angel who's not all knowing and needed to have a, a kind of indication of where to destroy and where not to destroy. The no, story but collapses. The story yeah. collapses when you say this is an all knowing God. It's the same. It's the same instance within the Quran itself as well, where Allah says, "You know, I would distinguish those who follow you or, or those who believe in me from the direction that they pray." It's the same thing. You have that sort of language in within the Quran itself. Sorry. Okay, great. The within the Quran itself, Allah says He would distinguish those who who worship Me from those who don't worship Me by the direction that they pray. Right. Right. So, are you saying that your Allah is, is that Allah saying He wouldn't know who's who unless they, He could see which way they're praying? Yes. Or would that would that be an indication for the people to know who's who? That's, and why can't it be the indication? No, because you're, you're trying to make it a, uh, into a thing that we know that Allah's all knowing. Nowhere in the Quran, if you if you read the Quran throughout, yes. it, Allah says not a leaf does drop without Him knowledge. So the idea that God wouldn't know, Allah wouldn't know who's who, except if He could see which way they were praying. Just it's, it's a nonsense, mate. And I'm going to let you go. No, 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 I'm going to no, let no. you go. Okay. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's that. The arena's over. I can't do the arena on my own. <laughs> So, um, unfortunately, Hamza could only join us for an hour and a half. Marshall, I was stretched into two hours. Um, and Brother Zakir, um, again, he was on a two-hour flex. 
I think Brother Shabir's got some issues at home. Brother Sadat couldn't make it. And so um, I'm going to end it here. Alhamdulillah. Oh, but here's the reality. Christians, I'm going to address you Christians, man, because it's mental. It's absolutely mental. Your, your um, perception of God is so debased and lowly. So debased and lowly. You reduce God to a God that can't forgive without payment. You make God into a man. You turn God into one who regrets. You turn God into one who needs signposts. It's, it's, Subhanallah, we don't have these issues in Islam. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah. No, I'm not going to go alone, man. The idea of the arena is... Um, I, I personally, I'm not the one with all of the answers and all of the knowledge. Um, this is why, mashallah, I put good people on the panel um, from a different perspective. Someone who can handle, handle philosophy. Someone can handle Christianity. Um, someone can um, handle contemporary affairs. And so we give uh, full attention to the question. Forget the person asking the question. We know trolls come. So, for example, I think many trolls have been on already. And um, <clears throat> alhamdulillah, irregardless of them being trolls, to hear the point they raised, because it is a point that's probably out there, and, and you, you guys learn how to deal with it, inshallah. So, um, yeah. So at this point, oh, I'm tired as well anyway. So alhamdulillah. So inshallah, I'm going to leave the stream now. Alhamdulillah. Um, next week, I'm trying to arrange um, this Urdit guy, the Turkish guy, the, um, the Sunnah Rejector guy. Inshallah, I'm going to try to um, hook that stream up. So it'll be Hadith Rejection Part 3 as a finality with myself, uh, Jake and Farid. Um, if not, I might try to do an ex-Muslim stream, inshallah. Uh, no money came on and he came with a tape recorder, which was absolute garbage. So I don't know. So anyhow, Jazakallah khairan. Sorry, um, it, it wasn't the usual five hours, but mashallah, it's 11.49. I went live about 9.09. .09. So mashallah, we, we, we've done uh, two, two, hour, two and a half hours, mashallah, two hours 40, alhamdulillah. And so, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on... Sunday, inshallah, on my usual um, Sunday live stream, chilling out in the den. Uh, members only live will be this um, Sunday as well, inshallah. So that being said, I'm going to send on the lion and I'm going to say, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.